Great. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to our first session of the Red Storm Rising campaign adventure that's titled The Darkest Dream. This adventure was designed by Gooey Cube, which is a uh, really interesting organization that wanted to create immersive role-playing experiences for 5th edition. Um, not that there's not a lot out there and not that homebrew is uh, not a way to go, um, but uh, their product is wonderful. And uh, if you haven't seen it yet, or if you're here to check it out, we hope that it gives you somewhat of a taste of uh, what it can bring to the role-playing table and 5th edition experience. Um, I think you guys will be well satisfied on it. Um, we are we are the Greater Mole Master Beholders Core that is presenting this campaign. I'm not going to get too far into that, but our slogan is that we hope your minds will be opened by wonder. All right, my friends, we are excited to begin this adventure, and we hope that all our viewers enjoy it as much as we do. Um, I know our players are going to enjoy it. Our players, speaking of them, today are Zane, Mark, Lee, the Mighty Trey, and Chris. And they will be known, obviously, by their character names, but that's who we are. And I am Casey. I'm best known as the Emissary of the Great Mother. If you know much about Beholder lore, you would understand that re reference. But I ask you guys, shall we begin, everybody? Yes. Aye. Aye. All right. Go forth. Aye, aye. The eyes have it, then. Woohoo! Salute. Aye. All right. I, all right, friends. Our adventure tells the tale of a few teenaged friends who happen to grow up together being members of a traveling group of Hanatas entertainers on the continent of Verdestia in the world of Zayathe. And we start our adventure beginning on the 12th day of Dezeun. And I will show you the map of the world. All right, my friends, here is Zayathe. The world of Zayathe is very complex, very spectacular, many continents, quite well fleshed out. And within the GUI cube system, you could uh, get the product known as the Cyclopedia, uh, Volume 1. And it talks about uh, much of what is going on in the world and how the world is shaped. But to let you guys know where you are, you are um, on the continent, continent of Verdestia, the western side of the continent, in the northwest corner of the map. Um, and the, uh, uh, let me show you the other map here. Here is the other map. This is kind of a blow up of western Verdestia. And if you look very closely in kind of the center west uh, left side of the map to the left of Mus Deron, which is a giant mountain, you see the city of Darkenhaven. And then down to the south, you might see the Black Root Bog, or the Black Rot Bog. And then just to the left of that, just to the west of that on the coast, you'll see a small town called Nevermore. And that is where you guys are right now, is in that area. It's near the town of Nevermore. All right. Um, the Hanatas troop is camped near the town of Nevermore, which is situated within the Republic of Xyranthia, which I said is located on the western coast there. The troop is preparing for the final day of their spectacular show known as Carnival. Who and what is this wandering band, you might ask? Well, I shall tell you. So sit back as we tell you a tale. The Blue Veil is the name of one of the number of one of a number of Hanata's caravans that ride the roads of the continent of Verdestia, which is considered the most northwestern of the civilized continents of the world of Zayathe. Like all Hanata's troops, the Blue Veil are a close-knit group with much strong kinship. For the most part, they traverse the lands of the Republic of Xyranthia and the sovereignty of Andvala, 
which are the most Western and most Southern civilizations of the continent. Because of the blood touch that most troop members carry, the Hanatas are outcasts from the civilized world. And as such, they are a traveling people with their own homes being the wagons in which they ride. You are a member of the Blue Veil Troop, and because you are a younger person, you are referred to as Frenta, which is roughly translated as youth in the common tongue that is spoken in the civilized lands. As Frenta, you are in training to work the shows, to contest against those who would wager their coin, to help aid and defend the troop, and ultimately to take over leadership when the current Bonduran are too old to carry on with their duties. The term Bonduran means protectors. When translated into the common speech, most troops have eight to 12 Bonduran who serve on the troop council. Typically, however, there are one or two individuals that serve as Prema Bonduran, and these are the primary leaders of the troop. The Prema Bonduran of your troop are named Borag and Kalnasi. Borag is the strong man of the Blue Veil and is massive and incredibly strong as a humanoid, and that's owing to the ogre blood in his veins. Nearly seven foot tall with broad shoulders and a thick frame, he can wrestle five or more strapping farmers at once and win consistently. But physical strength is not his greatest asset for he is a good and honorable man, true to the members of the troop and carrying a fatherly love that lies deep in his heart. Each of you have felt his encouragement and his admonishment, seen his tireless efforts to keep the troop healthy and safe and watched his patient and kindly ways even when the littlest members of the blue even with the littlest members of the veil for you have also seen him wrestle a horde of these youngsters which is the hanatized word for children with a broad smile on his face as those same little ones pin him to the ground laughing with glee as they bounce atop his enormous frame kalnasi is a half orc and is nearly as strong as Borag, allowing her to take on four or more farmers herself. But because she is smaller than the ogre man and her frame more lithe, she is typically able to win more coin. Most believe her to be the far easier opponent, a mistake that has led to many painful sprains and many more empty purses. Kalnasi is also cunningly smart and has helped the troop avoid many problems with her quick thinking and extensive knowledge. But, like Borag, these are not her greatest qualities, for Kalnasi is so much more than a strong and capable leader. In truth, she is a, as much a mother to you as any, with a will for your safety that is unmatched. Many times you have felt her embrace when the world brought you pain, and more times than perhaps you would like, you have felt the sting of her hand on your backside when you broke your honor. As Prema Bandoran, these two are named as the Bravda and the Vendra of the troop, which loosely means all father and all mother in common speech. It is a duty that never that they never shirk. Borag and Kalnasi have been married for many years, and they have three children, of which one of you is one of the children. But the Hanata's way is not to dictate through rulership, nor does position pass by blood. Though Borag and Kalnasi are the leaders of the troop, both in name and by position, they serve under the guidance of the Bonduran Council and appointed by them. But all troop members, no matter their position, give deference and honor to Mother Salvensa, the wise and powerful, powerful seeress of the Blue Veil. Mother Salvensa is the matriarch of your troop and a diviner of no small ability. The people of the villages come to hear their fortunes from her, ill or fair and to drop their coin into her old worn strong box. Though quite advanced in age, her magic is still potent and she can both heal and harm if the troop is in need. She is a kindly woman with white hair and a wrinkled face and is often broken, that is often broken with a toothless smile and her wisdom has served the troop well since she became serious many decades. She is also as kind and loving as any grandmother could be and often as mischievous as an imp. And together these three 
lead the troop with strength, integrity, and wisdom, following the ancient code of the traveling folk. And should the caravan be assailed, all three will make much trouble for those who would seek to bring violence upon their people. But they would not be alone should a group of bandits or a roaming orc war party attack the blue bale. For within the troop are a number of dangerous and capable foes, ready and able to defend the wagons, the elder folk, and the children of the Hanata, should the need arise. There is a very long section about the individuals of the Blue Veil. Do you all wish that I read that to you? Or would you like me to jump over that for now and you encounter them as you go? I would prefer encounter them. I've read that section. Okay. Same here. Let us discover the world as everyone else discovers the world. Okay. All right. Okay, that sounds right. good. Read a lot. Okay. Um, yeah, there's quite a bit of information at this point about the various uh, members of the Vale. Um, it sounds like our characters have uh, read that, and so they know uh, who they are in name. And uh, as they uh, meet up with them, uh, more of their personalities will be known. Um, uh, so we will say that with all of the Blue Veil vale all together, many wonderful folk make up your kin. And you are thankful for each one of them. And when you ponder what might have been your fate, had you not ended up with the Hanatas, your thoughts grow cold. The world is not kind to those of impure blood. Indeed, in some places you would not have been allowed to live. But as you think on this, a smile comes to your face. Though you are not rich in material wealth, and though others shun you for the reasons you cannot understand, and though the road is the only home you know, it is good to be one of the Blue Veil troop. So, with that, my friends, I ask you all to introduce yourselves, and we begin with Theros. Tell us about you. I am Theros, the son of Borag. I am a barbarian. Sorry, my voice is not going through. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you just fine. Go ahead and talk. Sorry, I just was having some problems with my microphone. Okay. Of course. <laughs> Theros is a 19-year-old son of Borag and Kanasa, the bravada and vernada of the troop. As such, he is gifted with the blood of both the orc, ogre and the orc among the gifts he's received from his mostly fa human heritage. Borag is about 80% human and 20% orc. Kanasa is a true half-orc. Theros is also gifted with a temper that accompanies such family history. He is a huge and strapping young man with strong facial features, golden brown eyes, and a wiry smile, and greenish tinted skin. He bears the fangs common to that of half-orcs, but they're not overly large. He has a deep voice and an intense manner that is bellied by his somewhat quiet, quiet demeanor. He's about six foot six tall, weighs around 300 pounds, all muscle. He is one of the largest of the troop. He trains regularly with his father and mother and his skills with the great axe and the great sword. He's also quite capable of throwing axes, as Cray the Blade, a fellow troop member, has uh, been instructing him in this talent. Like his sister and younger brother, Theros has been raised by the Hanata's troops since he was a baby. He is loyal to his parents, and to the rest of his kin is unquestioned. He has also likely assumed the title of strongman when Borag retires from the position. Because his father and mother are both troop leaders, he very well could become the bravado of the future. But the bravado of the troop is chosen by the Cirrus and the Burdin 
council. So he is not assured of achieving this position simply due to birth. He does aspire to a position of bravada and may, at times, be a little overt on his potential rivals. Theros has a great relationship with his sister, and they often train together. While he is somewhat jealous of her natural leadership's ability, he does not let that affect his love for her. Their younger brother is also a bit of a hero worshipping of his older, brothers and si older brother and sister, which can be annoying at times, but Theros also loves him deeply. Cool. And, uh, and uh, do you want me to continue on with the rest of the added stuff, or do you want to continue on? Um, we'll, come, we'll come around to that later. Um, Sounds good. Okay. I'll leave it there. All right. Well, uh, I recognize uh, Fleegan. Tell us about yourself. Fleegan. Philhelm. Phil Fundal Film is a male gnome with a strange disfigurement. Indeed. It was this curse that had him end up with the Hanatas in the first place. The affliction is called the squirms, or flesh fall in the common tongue. The disease causes areas of the face, and particularly those, those of the nose, ears, and lips to grow much larger than they should. Pronunciation. As such, Fleegan has a substantial droopy nose, large ears, and thick, dark lips on his rather round face. Beyond this, his entire body is hairless and his hands and feet have large bony knuckles that are somewhat painful in the cold weather. Because of this disease, Fleegan was given to the Hanatos by his parents when he was just a babe. He doesn't even know their names. Fleegan is a three foot, nine inch tall with a stocky frame. Tattoos adorn his body. In truth, he more closely resembles a very short dwarf without the beard. The disease has one benefit, however, it ha as it enhances muscle strength, making Fleegan very strong for his size. He is also quick and agile, which is unexpected given his, the appearance of his body. Fleegan carries two daggers for attacking in melee and throws daggers for ranged attacks. Fleegan is somewhat sour and surly with a sarcastic wick, wit that sometimes is off-putting. That said, he is also a valued friend of many of the Frenta. In particular, the Sorcerer Fix. They share a number of interests. Specifically, they love to play Zis, a two-player board game that is favored by those with high intellect. Fleegan is a hard worker and has a reputation for almost doing more than his share. He is very intelligent, a quick learner, kind of like me, and has a rapidly advanced in his studies in the way of the rogue. Well, cool. All right. Then I would ask Kenna, tell us about you. Uh, Kenna Nyama is uh, uh, Vera's, the spell dancer's daughter, and has celebrated her 16th birthday, which is the traditional date in which one becomes a friend in the Hanatas custom. She's five foot three inches tall and bears the blood touch of the Fey Ari. The look of Fey is somewhat strong in her, and her ears are quite a bit longer than an elves. She has long red brown hair with fine, fair features that are common amongst those whose blood carries the touch of the Fey folk. She is uh, has a small nose, high cheekbones, and a soft jaw with a pouty mouth that is fond of laughter. She is slight of build and light, uh, likely weighs no more than 100 pounds. She wears dark clothes that seem more to befit a rogue than a magic user, but favors a patchwork cloak that matches her joyful and outgoing personality. 
Her father is Cray the Blade, though she has not had a long or uh, close relationship with him. Uh, early in her youth, she showed a strong aptitude for, uh, in magic, and though Cray may have preferred that she learn the ways of the warrior, she was uh, apprenticed to uh, the spell dancers of the troop. Uh, her talents are significant, and her ability to channel the Everflow is considerable. She has learned much in the past decade and is, without a doubt, a very capable sorceress. She is also a spell dancer and has learned a number of the traditional and magical dances of the uh, Hantas. Hantas. Cool. All right. Well, uh, Quimber, tell us about you. Quimber was a very young man when he was found by the Hantas. He was found in a ditch alongside a road, and they rescued him. Some of the uh, the uh, elders of the group know his past, but he doesn't speak of it. It's a very sad road that he had to travel. But he found Kizma, his goddess, along the way. For there are many perils that he came across where he should have died. But she gave him a horse when he needed a horse. She gave him water when he needed water. And that led him to the Hanitas, to the troop, and his friends that you are hearing from now. Uh, so he let, he stayed in the path of his goddess Kizma and learned healing magic and light magic and fire magic to help the Hanitas in defense and help healing and help in any way he can late at night when there's just a need for light to repair something or to break down the tents, whatever he can do. And he is not weak. He is a strong, strong person. He could carry carry much and he, he carries his weight quite well around here uh, he has faint memories of his parents but uh, he doesn't like to think about it it is a comfortable dream of his parents but he doesn't feel it's his home anymore he is a friend frenta a member of the Hanitas now that is who he is that's who he always will be he, he loves this nomadic life but he and they're around civilization and performing, he's a bit on edge because the townies, they enjoy our entertainment, but they don't seem to enjoy our presence. And watching after the yuntas, the young ones, it's, it's quite a chore. I feel like I am sort of a mother, even though <laughs> I couldn't give birth to one of them and wouldn't want to. Uh, but my, my humor, as you can tell, is quite, quite dry. But my laugh, seems to bring everybody about anyways I, I enjoy humor I enjoy my friends I enjoy dancing singing the, the late night entertainment when the townies have gone away this is uh, I am I am just set here to be a carnival for my for life this is, but my need really is not with the troop eventually I would like to make some kind of earnings for myself given to me. Something I can do to not make a name of, for myself, but eventually maybe like a greater purpose. Something maybe Kizma. Kizma will eventually show me what this is. So Kizma has done much for me as the troop has. Well met, Quimber. Well met. Thank you, my friend. Uh, uh, I, I can give a quick description of him also if you'd like. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Quimbar Rand has a blocky, impressive build, making him look somewhat taller than his actual height, 5 foot 7 inches. His features generally resemble those of his Sedestian ancestors, though his family traveled across the sea to southern Andvala several generations ago. His bright red hair and red beard certainly stand out. His golden eyes glint in even the dimmest light. Good. Yep, that's uh, exactly what uh, he looks like. So thank you for that. We'll move on to Gror. Gror Grudgeholder is the only son of Stoof and Lena, who are of Mountain Dwarf stock and brewmasters within the Blue Veil troop. Stoof and Lena are afflicted with the Twisted Bones disease, which has made their bodies somewhat stooped and crooked. Thus, though, Grower has not shown evidence of this. 
foot seven inches tall and weighs 185 pounds. He is stout, thick, and very strong. He has flaming red hair that often is spiked up into a mohawk and a dense, bushy beard of the same color. He has strong facial features and high cheekbones. His eyes are crystal blue and dance when he laughs with deep guffaws. He has a confident manner and he is often seen with a smile on his face. Gwar moves very quickly for a dwarf and is an excellent warrior with impressive skills wielding battle axes, war hammers, shields, and short bows. Gwar has a friendly demeanor that has endeared him to many in the troop. His best friend in the camp is Theros. The two get on very well and often spar and train together. He is also very fraternal with many of the youngsters. Roar longs to know more of his dwarvish heritage and people. He is very prideful and would love to see the outside world. All right. Well, thank you all. Is that uh, everything for Grower for now? Yes. All right. Well, thank you all for that. Uh, well met, my friends. Well met. Um, so then, we begin with a story. Just last night, while the troop with ga- was gathered around the tent fire, Old Strem... I'll show you what Old Strem looks like. He is the storyteller of the group. Um, just a moment here. There we go. All right, Old Strem. He is the one who, <clears throat> around the tent fires, tells the stories. And just last night, while the troop was gathered around the tent fire. He tells the favorite tale, and one that is all too familiar, and is called the Legend of Xylea. Long ago, many centuries before the Woe of Ruin, there were no traveling folk. For the blood touch, it never manifested itself within any of the high races. But there came a day when the mother of all Hanatas was born. Her name was Zylea Aliana, and she was conceived in the coupling between an elven dancer, Kailane Aliana, and an unnamed traveling jester, and the two were said to have consorted on a warm spring eve some 2,000 years ago under the smiling light of a full-faced Lunios, which is the major moon of the world of Zyathen. Nine months later, on the 22nd day of the last month of the year, which is called Fool's Day, Xylea Aliana came into the world. If the tales be true, she was beautiful, an uncanny wit and an unnatural charm that could make the most surly king laugh till he cried. Her tricks were astounding and her jests greater than any comedic personage who had come before her. By the time she was just 16 years old, she was entertaining in the highest courts and playing on the grandest stages of the Thernic civilization. But Xylea had a secret that none except her mother knew. Namely, that beneath her thick makeup and billowing clowny clothes, she had skin of reddish orange, dark blue scales upon her back, and tiny horns beneath her hair. This secret was kept well for a number of years until Saltruana Veridasan, one of the high elven kings, determined that he would have Xylea. He devised a plan to have the woman entertain in his court for the birthday of his brother. But this was just a ruse to bring her to his magnificent forest city and into his majestic cathedral in the trees. The night before she was to perform, the king made his way in secret to the guest suite in which Xylea was abiding, and there, from a hidden niche, he watched her disrobe and bathe, open pool in her chambers. As he regarded her, he was even more tortured when he saw her exotic skin, 
beautiful shape gleaming in the moonlight, and then came forth from his place of hiding and exposed himself to her, his lust inflamed, his desire for her greater than anything he had ever wished for in all of his life. But Zylea rebuked Saltruana and slapped his face for taking such liberties. Ashamed, the king left her presence and retired to brood in his bedchambers and to plot his revenge upon the lass who had so be belittled him in his own castle. Thus on the night following, at the performance for Saltruan's brother, a stage hook chanced to catch upon Zylea's costume, tearing much of it from her body and exposing her secret for all the world to see. The king feigned aghast at the sight of her, and others in the audience followed suit as they had been prepared to do by the king's order. A group of priests in the audience named her a demon, and she was cast from the courts, never to perform again. Indeed, her alien appearance marked her for all in the realm, and she was turned out of villages and towns wherever she traveled. And then one day, as Ilea walked alone on a road, hoping beyond hope that she could find welcome in the next town, an old man in a jester's hat, driving a colorfully painted wagon pulled by huge blue horses, came up beside her. Zylea regarded the wizened figure, held the reins, was taken aback at the brightness in his eyes and the warmth of his smile. The man asked if she would like a ride, did not seem at all bothered by her alien appearance. Zylea agreed, and the two rode together for over a year. Now it's tis said that the old man told Zylea in their time together, for he was wise beyond wisdom. He spoke of life, love, purpose. He talked of the lifelong love. He talked of the life song and the way of all things. And the first flows of the Zion Thus, almost as if he had witnessed creation himself. He told Zylea that she was special and that she would be the first of many. And that much depended on her and on those who would come after her. And he even named her people, which are called the Hanatas, even to this day. And the world has no translation in the tongue of the common speech, and the, the word has no translation in the tongue of the common speech, but some have said it means the fool's dance, while others say it refers to the last laugh in some great comedic performance. But then one day, Zylea awoke to find that the old man had left. Sitting beside her were a necklace upon which the hung the symbol of the god Jinx, a large leather-bound magical tome, and the jester's hat that the old man had worn. And nearby was the brightly painted wagon and the great blue horses that had pulled it. Zylea donned the necklace and the hat and cracked open the tome. An inscription had been written on the inside of the cover. All it said was, The greatest jest is yet to be played. Learn well your part. The tome was said to contain all the spells of the traveling folks, the methods for which the crafting of their magical tents and the enchant and the enchanted movements of their spell dances, and the many incantations that create the phantasms and illusions that even today delight the crowds of the carnivals. Zylea studied the tome intently, learning conjurations and the magical dances while she crafted the first of the magical tents. And soon thereafter, people began to come to Zylea's camp, called by some unseen compulsion. And like her, these folks also had strange afflictions, deformities, and alien characteristics. And like her, those abnormalities had made them unwelcome in their towns. And over time, these folk built their own wagons, and together the troop traveled the roads of the grand civilizations, hosting the first carnivals and beginning the legacy of the Hanatat. And it came to pass that Zylea discovered she had the power of divination, 
allowing her to peer into the future, see shades of that which was to be. She named the gift the sight and began to use it for the benefit of her people. And some years later, just before the woe of ruin occurred, tis said that the old man came once again to Zylea, who was now of an advanced age, and the old man guided her and the troop she oversaw to a remote and hidden valley in the northern reaches, far from where the great calamity would originate. There the troop would survive the great destruction that followed, and, the and in the aftermath began to establish their place in the new world. In the years following the woe of ruin, it seemed that more folk than ever before were afflicted with the blood touch, and the one troop became two, and then three, and then several. Other troops were raised up on other continents as well. Hanata's people, though still ostracized from the general populations, achieved some measure of prosperity in the century that came after them. And then in the year 222 SC, which is 222 years following the woe of Rome, Zylea was laid to rest in a secret shrine on the continent of Verdestia. Her writings and teachings, however, lived after her, have been preserved by the many Hanata's troops, the travel, the roads of the world. And that, my friends, is the legend of Xylea and the origin of your truth. So, I ask you at this point, does anybody have any questions? We spoke of the woe of Rome, and I may have realized that some of you may not know what that means, but I will tell you now at this point uh, for your benefit because it is the most important event that happened within the world about 1200 years ago. The great Ethernic civilization had gotten so powerful and so well versed and able to use the Zianthus, the flow of magic, that they delved too far into that. And because of that, a massive cataclysm was unleashed upon the world, and it destroyed and fractured the world into many pieces, and began to corrupt the world in many ways. And the magic energies flowed across the face of the world, and are corrupting in many areas. And it is known as the Woe of Ruin. It is a dark time in the history of the world. And civilization thus far in the last 1200 years has been able to piece itself back together. It is interesting that the legend of Xylea tells that the Hanatas were created long before that. Um, they are integral to this world and the story of this world. And so it is appropriate that you all begin your adventure as a part of this storied group and uh, as they bring the tales up. So, any questions, my friend, before we begin and jump into the, uh, the story itself? The adventure itself, excuse me. Hey, bring it on! All right. <laughs> well, we will. We're ready. All right. Well, <laughs> after nearly 45 minutes of uh, story, which I hope was, uh, was satisfying to you all, uh, yes. we shall begin. Well worth it. Yep, yep. Okay. All right, my friends. Okay, well, after a late night around the tent fire, the morning has been busy preparing for the final day of Carnival. But you are rested and ready for the events to begin. And as you gather to receive your assignments for the day, um, you uh, in, uh, move and make your way towards the entrance to Carnival. So I'm assuming you all have your map centered in the location where you see a bunch of uh, your fellow Frenta. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Gar Garnick, you might want to remove like the picture and maps from your screen so that the YouTubers can see where we're at. Will work. Thank you. All right. So um, you guys are all gathering around, waiting for your assignments for the day. Being Frenta, obviously, you go to Borag the Bravda. 
um, to kind of let you know what it is exactly that you're going to be doing for the day. Because you could be helping out with the cooks, you could be gathering, you could be uh, working in various areas, you could be doing guard duty, you could be babysitting. Um, there's many different opportunities for you. Um, but uh, this day, as you gather, uh, getting ready to go, um, you uh, see Borag uh, approach all of you and uh, gather up within your midst. The day nears High Soul, and the Carnival is soon to open for the last day outside of Nevermore. At least for this season. Already a line of common folk, many with children in tow, stand before the two wagons that form the main entrance. They wear smiles on their faces and in anticipation on, in their postures, excited for the fun to come. As the carnival opens, they begin to filter onto the field, and the show begins with a fantastic magical display of Vestia and Skizig, two illusionary dragons alight in the sky, dancing and roaring to the delight of the crowd. And I shall show you what the crowd sees. It's quite spectacular. Um, there we go, there you go, all right. Awesome. Tis a strange thing, you think to yourself, as you look at the crowd. Here, these people, who would not welcome us in their town, come out to this field to enjoy our shows. We eat our food, we drink our libations, and they give us coin their coin though it makes no sense it is the way of the world and the lot of your life as a hanatas your group is assembled near the main gate where borag has gathered you to provide your assignments for the day and just before the entrance stands a small tent striped in blue and gold where anyone seeking to partake of the festivities may pay an entrance fee Dren and Kalva Steel are currently in the tent collecting the fees, and a small, crudely stamped token of a tent is given in exchange for the entry fee as proof of admission. You know any non hanatas that try to enter the carnival area without a token set off a modified alarm spell that screeches to inform the camp they've been cheated. Fortunately, it seems the locals have learned their lesson, and the alarm has not sounded for the past two days. It will likely not sound today either, is without the token, most attractions are off limits anyway. Behind you are the tents and the troops you used for Carnival, plus all of your brightly painted wagons and a riot of colorful streamers and flags strung between them. The tall tent rises in the center of the field, its peaks of striped cloth billowing beneath bright blue pennants that flap lazily atop its towering tent poles. In the tall tent is where the high mystiques happen. Well, the morning fog has burned away, but it has been replaced with a light haze rising from the cook fires, and you can hear the occasional pops of small fireworks going off about the din of the crowd, and the smoke carries the smells of roasting spiced meats, fried okra, simmering zarisho, uh, zariso, and fresh baked pole bread. Your stomach rumbles at the delicious aromas. Suddenly, the distant roar of Tranoff, Sel Selvra's manticore, cuts through the morning air. It is greeted by squeals of glee and gasps of fright from the crowd. And my friends, we shall change the ambiance here. Um, there we go. A little bit more what's going on here. All right, the ambience. Okay. So... Uh, you w well know that the uh, Selvra is the Beastmaster, and she has a manticore um, and an owl bear as her pets that uh, obey her commands, and she's showing them off, obviously, at this moment. Periodically, you can hear howls of outrage, cries of triumph erupting from the brightly colored gambling tents set up near the entrance. These typically open around ten bells. No fist fights have spilled out so far today, but you know you're going to have to check and regularly break up the inevitable brawls. Beyond them, the tent of veils shimmers in the sunlight, its colorful fabric moving rhythmically in the light morning breeze as if to pay homage to the dancers within. In the distance, Mother Salvence's pink and purple tent sparkles with all manner of decorative patterns. 
And on the other side of the camp, past the tents, the line of the blue veils, carts, and wagons stretches in a semicircle by the forest's edge. There, troop members peddle trinkets, baubles, and other goods of, of open, out of open windows from their wagons to passing locals, jewelry baskets, baskets, rugs, scarves, and all with unique and exotic patterns of the Hanatas are always enticing buys for the locals who are used to the more simple, unadorned items procured in their area. More people are arriving, and yeah, it's definitely going to be a busy day. So, let me turn this down a little bit here. Alright. Alright, so if you have the uh, image of uh, the flying dragons up, you may want to go ahead and pop down at this point. Um, Alright. All right, so uh, Borag approaches. So uh, he looks at the five of you, um, who are members here, and he says, um, uh, "Just a moment, uh, my youngsters. I, uh, Frenta, excuse me, sorry. Uh, just a moment, my Frenta. Uh, I will be with you uh, momentarily, but uh, first, uh, I need to uh, speak with some of the others here. Kalnas, uh, Kasserine, uh, stop fighting with your brother." Hey, sis. Yeah. Yes, you guys too. To separate there, Cal Nassi and uh, and Sidir, I need you. I need you to go help. Uh, I need you to go help with the uh, the the wagons. Uh, they. Uh, I need you to do the gathering of the wood. You know, uh, the two over there. They their legs. They're short, and uh, they have no no uh, way to be able to get to what they need quickly. So you two need to go off that direction. And they say yes. All right, sis. Put her in the arm. <laughs> ah, brother, you frustrate me. I cannot believe you snore all night long. You, I need to be going, but you, you kept me from sleeping. I'm so tired of that. So off I go. Leave me alone. Yes. He's so loud he keeps me from sleeping sometimes. Mm. Of course he does. Of course he does. <laughs> Doesn't bother me. And then he looks over at uh, he looks over at Fix, and he says, "Fix, uh, today your talents are needed in the tents. Um, I know that you would rather stay with Fliegen, but uh, uh, it's it's important that uh, you you help out with uh, uh, Sunasi. They are expecting a big crowd today. Fliegen, uh, uh, um, I I'm sorry for that." All right, so uh, Fixie heads off towards the food tents, and then uh, he looks uh, somewhat crossways at Naftalia. He says, Naftalia, you know what you've done. You know where we found you, found you with this morning. Uh, such shame, such shame you've brought upon our troop. So therefore, you have babysitting duty with the youngsters today. Get on, get on with you. Think about what you've done, and we shall talk later, young one. He says, oh, Zatis, one more. And then there's Drezen. Drezen, I am much proud of you. Maybe you all day. He, yesterday, used his abilities to be able to notice somebody cheating in the gambling tent. Yes, they were cheating, and he saved us much yells that day. Much yells. So today, he gets the day off. You do what you desire. Just make sure that you stay close, as we may need your help this evening as we begin to pack things up. And Dresden says, Oh, yes! Yes! Yes, thank you. Thank you. I shall enjoy my time today. He travels off in the direction that he needs to go. So then... Orag looks at you all and he says, All right! We have had too many close calls over the past days. The townies will come in droves today, but their leaders are getting antsy. They may try to cause trouble for us, and they may even try to mm, encourage us to move along. So I need you to keep an eye out. Make sure no one from either side is doing anything stupid enough to get us into real trouble. And uh, I need you to break up fights, 
keep them out of places they don't belong and make sure everything, well, you know, runs smoothly. So, hear me now. Avoid drawing steel unless you absolutely need to protect yourselves. Use fists if that's what they're swinging at you. And only if anyone gets tough with you. Anything more and you'll have the town guards coming down on all of us. His eyes suddenly look beyond you to the entrance. Ugh. Speak of the devil. And he gives a sideways glance to Theros as he's saying these things about um, not wanting the town guard to come down on him because he knows of his uh, hothead. His Just voice crack my knuckles. Mm -hmm. He shakes his head. His voice trails off as the town constable, a man named Rolf, approaches you, flanked by six of his town guard. Let me show you a picture of Rolf here. Um, there you go, there's Rolf. The guards wear slightly frayed tabards, bearing the cat's head in front of a blue moon. Underneath here, you can see worn suits of studded leather armor and helmets that bear noticeable dents from overuse and more than a little lack of care. Some are holding halberds, while others and all have long daggers secured to their belts. The constable wears plate mail, which is in good condition, and his hand rests on the pommel of a long sword. Tall and imposing, he has closely shaved brown hair and a matching, neatly trimmed beard. He strides almost arrogantly up to Borag, despite clearly being out-muscled by the Bravda of the Blue Veil. And without preamble, he begins to make demands of the troop. You overstayed your welcome, sir! The Council of Nevermore insists you peddle your vices elsewhere. elsewhere. Uh, Borag responds, Half your town is already here, including at least a couple of your counselors, if I'm not mistaken, replies Borag with a chuckle. Today is our last day anyway. We'll be heading out tomorrow. Uh, after a few moments of tense silence, the constable huffs, but grudgingly agrees. Or oh, see to it that you do. And if I find you here tomorrow, I won't, it won't be a request. My men will keep watch by the entrance here and patrol the perimeter to keep the pace. And at that, he turns and walks briskly back down the road, followed by two of his guards. The four remaining town's guard appear to lack the constable's conviction and disdain, and but the two that move up to take up positions by the entrance still give you dirty looks. And as they do, the other two begin to circle around the edge of Carnival. They have the look of hard men and women, and you uneasily note that, unlike the rest of their gear, their weapons are well-oiled and appear wickedly sharp. So, Borag turns back to you. Uh, as you can see, my Zatis, we don't need to give him an excuse. Those fine fellows are more likely to cause problems than stop them. He says, gesturing to the town guards. Patrol the camp and keep a sharp eye out for trouble. Some of you have a talent for mischief, and you can always put that to good use. But try to keep it in check today. Drop by the wrestling rings later to let me know how things are going. So at this point, uh, you guys can uh, yes, interact Pravda. with Borag if you'd like to. What's that? Yes, Pravda. Uh, yes, Father. Theros, I expect Pravda. you to keep safe. What's that? What was that? Flagan? We will gladly follow your instructions, and I look forward to seeing you at the wrestling rings. Oh, Gore, you know. You oh, know I look forward to Yes, we win mini coin. When you take down men who think your short stature is I... not not appropriate to their means, and they have the ability to take you down, oh, you surprise them! Yes, we're looking forward to that. Come, come! At some point today, my uh, my good Zatis, we we shall win much coin today. I am confident of it. Father, you think that we might be able to give those guards some drinks, as we have done before? Maybe get them involved in some of the debauchery that the priests of the local townies always accuse us of. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Oh, 
Oh, you make me laugh. Oh, you make me laugh. Well, you know, we do, we do that, and they, though they may uh, look as if they were expected, those two up there near the entrance, they are quite vigilant. I know them well, and I think that maybe that would, uh, that would not go over well with the constable. He's already kind of itching to get us out of town, as it were. But uh, <laughs> maybe tonight, yes, we shall see. Uh, remind me of that later. Uh-huh. And uh, we shall see so. what happens. Yes. Oh, my Zatis. Well, it seems as if things are moving quite rapidly. Line is going, and uh, things are happening. And oh, I think Kalnasi is. Uh, is giving me the signal uh, there are people ready to wrestle and money is to be had so uh go on your ways my uh my young people uh make me proud this day and i shall see you soon i shall see you very soon and uh, he travels off towards the wrestling pits and admonishes you to uh uh start your activities for the day so you are uh um uh free to choose your path through carnival in pursuit of your duties what is it uh, that you guys would like to do at first talk amongst yourselves maybe uh, or uh, um, decide where you're going let me know we should split up and mirror the troops that are uh, the guards that are going around the uh, perimeter is my um, actually in the process of this they've already kind of passed out of sight Um, There are the two guards there that are by the entrance watching as people are coming in. Um, Ah, brothers, I think I'll go over by the gams and watch them. Make sure that none of the townies start in trouble when they start losing their seals. Uh, I may have uh, not mentioned this, but it uh, it might behoove you all to stay together. Um, So I will say that... um, Borag uh, is uh, kind of admonishes you to uh, um, not break up into groups unless abs- or not break up into individuals unless absolutely necessary or that you might find as such. But uh, that is that is up to you. Well, let us let us go to the food and drink wagons first. Agreed. Ah, get some get some breakfast to begin, huh? Ah, right. like you're thinking. I'm glad we have to stick together. I'd probably get myself in trouble. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. The real reason why he wants us all to stick together is to make sure I don't do something stupid. Well, I think Flegan is uh, pining after. Maybe he wants to go over and visit her at the food and tents as well. Am I right in that? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Um, I'll start uh, as, walking as, over there. And as, as I start walking over there, I'm going to start saying, Oh, they always make Flegan do things. Oh, get the thieves! Capture that guy! Track down the the the, the person hitting on the, the women, and and clean out the monocords cage, and do backflips and wiggle your ears all flag and getting so tired of this. <laughs> all right, give me just a second to grab something real quick. Um... Um, give me one moment here. You guys are welcome to talk amongst yourselves, but uh, let me find something in the book. Well, Fleegan, if all of that is too much of a problem, maybe we should do a new act. Shot put de Fleegan. <laughs> Good one, brother. Ha ha ha. I bet I can jump up on top of your head. Okay. Um. Both and Quipper, then we'll find the shot put de Fliegen. <laughs> I would like both Quember and uh, Kenna to uh, give me a perception check, please. Certainly. That is a 12 total for me. Oh, I'm sorry, 17 for me. Okay. I think some, now that I look at this, I think something to do is you guys will need to change your uh, uh, 
uh, screen names to match your character names. Um, it'll be easier for me to to recognize them moving forward. But um, okay, right. And uh, um, how do we how do we do that? Ah, I see, I see. Yeah. Something I missed in the housekeeping. Okay. Um. Hey, girl. All right, you coming? You. Of course. All right. All right. Um. So. Kenna, you, uh, you actually notice laying on the ground uh, near the wagon that you're approaching uh, a small pouch. I will casually pick it up. Okay. Um, it's, uh, it's uh, fairly heavy and it uh, clinks as if something, maybe the sound of porcelain and, or, or glass... Yeah, possibly glass or porcelain or something might be inside, and it's a little squishy, and it has a, it has an interesting aroma to it, almost a sweet, a both sweet and uh, savory aroma to it, believe it or not. Um, can you do anything else with it? Being trained in Arcana, does that um, allow me to identify any magical remnants or um, um with arcana what you could do is give me an arcana check to, if you're trying to deduce just from your knowledge of arcana mm. whether or not it um it has uh magical properties so give me an arcana check um mm. your your skill and your background um uh as a spell dancer doesn't seem to indicate uh, that there would be any potential magical properties with that at this okay. time. So. I'm gonna op open the bag slightly and just peek okay. in. Alright, uh, that scent seems to get a little bit in the bag, uh, but it's a, it's a pleasant scent. Um, and uh, you notice uh, inside it's uh, full of uh, a number of small uh, smoking pipes that are packed full of, of a uh, certain kind of leaf. Um, do you show it to anybody? Mm. No, I think I'm just gonna put it on my belt and then I'll, I'll show it to, uh, uh, the Bre uh, Brevas later. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. All right. Well, while, uh, while we're doing that, while you guys are, uh, that in your Toward the uh, the wagons uh, for food and such, um, the warmth of soul feels good on your backs as it chases away the morning chill. Winter is coming, but today is glorious, and that means that Carnival will likely be packed. Looking towards the entrance uh, before, you can see that the line for admittance continues to lengthen despite the two frenta in the token tent moving as quickly as they can. A number of wagons have also pulled up and parked on the side of the road, and their inhabitants clearly excited for the carnival. As you watch, just to the northeast of the entrance, a fairly, uh, a rather fancy coach pulled by two sh uh, Shugenshire Greys comes to a halt. Uh, Shugenshire is uh, a town to the northwest of here, and they're well known for raising uh, Grey. Um, horses that are quite uh, well sought after and quite expensive. The driver jumps down and opens the door to the coach and a finely dressed woman with parasol and a young smiling boy climb down from the carriage. The pair begins to walk towards the entrance, the boy pulling at his mother's hand. Okay. And um, as this happens, um, there are five pipes in the bag. Um, as this happens, suddenly, um, I'm gonna stop the noise here, uh, a bestial roar from the edge of the wood across the road, and in an instant, 
a huge, massive bear emerges from the trees, frothing at the mouth, eyes wide with madness. And it charges towards the woman and the boy, who stand transfixed in horror. Moving quickly, the coach driver steps between a short sword, all that protects him from the crazed beast. The woman screams before falling to the ground in a faint. And the little boy seems mesmerized and stands there watching the scene with his mouth agape. Gasps and screams erupt from the crowd as many start to run down the road in fear, and the two towns guard move forward with their pole arms, but they are likely no match for the huge animal. I will show you if you look just uh, to the other side of the road, north of where the wagon entrances are, I will actually show you the bear here and the boy. And we'll come back here. And the uh, the town's guard towards the bear. What do you all do? Gror says we cannot let the town's guard have all the glory and fun. We must keep the crowd safe. And he, I'm, yeah, I pull my bow and move in that direction. To battle! Of course, drawing weapons. <laughs> yes, my brothers! Ah! Great! A 15-foot-tall bear! All right. Uh, Perhaps we should get dead. <laughs> the only one with any common sense. So <laughs> this, is actually, this is actually a picture of what you see. Um, and uh, it sounds like you guys are uh, going to after attack them so uh you guys can move uh from where you're at up to your distance this round here all right and as you do so um the town's guard engage with the bear and i'm going to go ahead and Initiative for them. Find these here. Should we roll as well? Um, I will have you guys roll initiative in just a moment, okay? okay. Is that a double move or just a regular move? Just a regular move. Um, unless you unless you dash. I guess you could choose to dash if you want to, which is double your move. Um, but it's your choice on whether you're wanting to dash fray or just move to that point. I'll dash. How do you uh, do the the range thing again? Um, there is a tool um, that looks like a circle with a line on it, um, and you click if you click on that tool, and then click and drag. There you go. Got it. Okay, and then okay. Upon mine, I can dash all the way to. Okay. All right. <laughs> the bear rolls a one for initiative, really. All right. Of course it does. Jeez, Theros, just right up in there. <laughs> Dashed. Can't do much until so, we'll see what happens. Yeah, you can't do anything first. Okay, so in this first round, though, as you guys are moving, um, the bear and the guards are going to um, attack each other. And the bear actually takes one massive claw. He's huge. Uh, he's bigger than any bear you've ever seen before. Come, he comes crashing out. And there's this kid wetting his pants there up underneath. Um, and the uh, carriage driver who pulled his short sword gets a face full of the bear's um, claw. And it, uh, it immediately just cuts him down. And the, and the, um, the uh, carriage driver goes down to the ground um, immediately with the claw. But the, uh, the guards here, I'll take the guard on the left, is going to take his halberd, and he is going to attempt to attack the bear. And he is going to, I believe... I was not clicked on my token when I did initiative. Is there a way from... Yes, I can add you. Okay. Um, just a second. So that is... Can, uh, um, and I had you, and then you, what did you, what was your initiative? 17. 17. Yep. Okay. All right. I got it in there. Okay. 
and then um, so the guard will the bear will hit the bear for six slashing damage with his hammer, and the other guard will also attempt to hit the bear halberd and does so as well for 10 more slash. Then the bear roars in frustration. Um, and uh, it turns around, and even though it uh, slashed at the, um, at the driver, it uh, does not like the sting of the weapon from um, one of the town's guard. And so it attempts, the bear attempts to take a bite out of the town guard. And uh, uh, the town guard uh, sees it coming and gets out of the way at the last moment. So let's go ahead and put everybody in initiative order here. And we will give everyone a chance. To take their turn. So Fliegen, you're up first. Uh, are, are we still missing somebody? Yeah, I failed to claim uh, my token all, so I hit it a little too okay. early, so I got a 13. Okay. okay, so that is this guy here. And you said 13? Yes. Okay. All right. And that's something I tend to do, too, so no worries. It happens. All right, so Fliegen, what's up? I will go ahead and throw a dagger. Okay. I got two Groars up there instead of a Quimbar. Oh, is that? I grabbed the wrong one. Okay. Um, oh, darn it. That was... Might help if I manage these right, and then I need to... Two Groars are not better than one. One is just plenty. All that we need. Agreed. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right. So you... Roll Throw your head. dagger at the bear, and uh, that uh, sticks right in the bear's leg. For how much damage? Woohoo! Six! Nice. And I heard it! Okay. And you. Uh, Theros is an ally standing right next to it, so you get sneak attack damage. You're welcome. So did you hear that, Fliegen? You get to actually... You get to do... Damage. There you go. Oh, jeez. Nice. I heard it some more! Very okay, nice. so that so that dagger actually didn't stick in its leg; it stuck in its eye. Ow! Um, it roars in bestial pain as blood pours out of its eye socket with a dagger stuck in its eye socket, um, and uh, it's frothing at the mouth. Um, Theros, you actually get the whiff of what sound what smells like sour alcohol coming from the bear. It's kind of strange. All right, uh, Gore, you're up. An arrow I wish to shoot right into that bear's eye. Okay, take a shot. He's trying to steal Fleegan's gig. I Not the same eye. The remaining eye is less aerodynamic than an arrow. <laughs> well, hit. He, uh, he tries to shoot him in the eye. Um, and, uh, it hits him, uh, right, uh, right in the soft portion of the mouth as he was, uh, trying to bite the guard there, so, uh, go ahead and roll damage, please. I keep getting attack rolls when I click on the damage type area. Uh, you want to click, click, click on the short bow. In the chat section, you want to click on short bow at the bottom. There you go. All right, so four piercing damage. All right. Um, Kenna, you're up. 
I am going to um, cast one of the worst named uh, spells in D&D, &D, Chill Touch, um, because it does necrotic and is at range. So um, I will... Will a 12 hit? It's neither chill nor a touch. Um, exactly. Yeah. No, actually, you miss. Dang um, it. The... Uh, the non-touching touching chill uh, um, flies uh, wide of the bear as he uh, stumbles out of the way in a drunken stumble. All right, the guards have a chance to go, and uh, seeing success with their halberd, they try again. Uh, the first one uh, misses as the bear seems to be stumbling around, and is somewhat of a harder target. He seems to be stumbling more than initially which is quite interesting. The other one swings his halberd and uh, misses as well. So neither one of them were able to act, and uh, you can start to see them sweating a little bit under the uh, the warming sun of uh, Sewell. Kimber. Looking at a few spells here. Let's see. All right, I'm going to move up a little closer. I need to get within range. Okay. I'll get behind Theros, and I'll amplify my voice and throw up my arms behind him or around him, make him look all crazy looking, and just <laughs> probably okay. hurt my brother's eardrums a little bit, but I'm trying to <laughs> make him look very menacing, sound very menacing to the creature in front of him. To hopefully, if the beast is of any normality, Maybe he'll turn and flee. Plus, I'll put, um, let's see, what do we got? We got a little kid still up here in danger? Yes. Yep. I'll drop uh, as a bonus action Shield of Faith on him. Okay. All right. Uh, so give me an intimidation check, please. Um, you know, from me or Theros? <laughs> no, from Kimber. <laughs> okay. You're the one doing the roaring. Um, make it with advantage because of dermatology. Okay, oh, so that's a advantage. twenty. Nice. Yeah, that's a, that's a twenty. Nice. Um, you see the uh, bear acknowledge your presence, but uh, kind of stagger and waver a little bit. Drool. Uh, you also, now that you've gotten close, are catching a whiff of um, of stale liquor. Um, but he kind of staggers around a little bit, seems to shake his head, and it uh, it doesn't it doesn't uh, take uh, the effect that you wish that it would. Ah, dumb animal! All right, Theros, you're up. As much as I would like to save this animal's life, we're going to end it. <laughs> I swear on my pretty little bonnet, I will end you. All right. Okay, so... <laughs> yeah, you take a big swing with your great axe, and uh, you are quite confident that you're going to hit him, and he stumbles backwards at the last second, and you connect with nothing but air. And in response to that, a massive paw comes flying at your face. And um, you're able to uh, deflect it with your shield. So, uh, and it uh, reaches over and tries to bite the guard to your right. And does so. For eight piercing damage, the guard is... As, as it uh, rips um, its uh, bite across the guard's shoulder, gobs of blood spill out everywhere, and the um, guard looks like he's about ready to go down immediately. One. All right, Fleegan, you're up. 
I will throw another dagger at this really unhappy bear. Right. That is going to miss. It goes right on by him. Anything else? Nope, I'm happy where I'm at. Okay. Okay, Gore. I will aim for that same eye. <laughs> the eyes have it, of course they do. And you are going to hit that same eye for how much damage? Five piercing damage. All right. Okay. Kenna. Okay, since that didn't work, I'm going to... while pulling the sword and slash the uh, bear. So, uh, say that again, you kind of broke up. Oh, sorry, I'm moving up to where the kid is mm -hmm. and pushing him behind me so he's not in contact with the bear and slashing at the bear with my short sword. Okay, okay, so you're pushing the kid behind you, which goes back yep. there. And then go ahead and take a slash at the bear with your sword. Um, that's it's going to hit. Excellent. Four force, points of piercing. Four piercing damage. Okay. All right. Uh, you poke him and draw a little bit of blood. All right. Anything else? That is all I could do for now. Okay. Uh, the guard on the left is a little bit worried about his friend, and so renewed invigoration he is going to try and stab with his halberd and miss the guard to the right um is starting to panic and uh swings widely with his halberd and uh misses as well uh probably due to the gash on his shoulder making him unable to use it as a so clember you're up I want to look at some of these people. Who, who has sustained any injuries from this beast? Uh, just the guard and the um, the uh, the carriage coachman. driver. The coachman is down on the ground. Um, he got smacked upside the head, and he's breathing. Um, so he's not dead, but he's unconscious on the ground. Probably got a pretty good concussion. Everybody else screamed and ran away, and what is probably the mother of the young, uh, the one with the parasol, she's laying on the ground well, and she fainted. And he hasn't. The bear hasn't gone after her, and everybody else is screaming and running. So. Uh, well, first things first. Uh, I've got so many different things I can do, but I am going mm -hmm. to move up to the warrior that is injured and try to attempt to heal him. And I'm going to use Healing Word on the down coachman, which has a range of 60 feet. And it's a for a bonus action. Okay. So, wanting to wanting to cast Healing Word on the down coachman, what are you wanting to do with the guard? Uh, cure Light Wounds, or sorry, just Cure Wounds is in action. Healing word is uh -huh. a bonus action. Word is a bonus action. So okay. if they work yep. nicely together, yes. I'll be able to heal yep. the guard and the coachman that might be dying. Okay. Yep. Yep. That's what I just wanted to make sure. That, that's what. Okay. So healing word. So go ahead. Make your rolls for each one of those. Tell me which one first. All right. Let's see. Oh, I didn't put healing word in my easy to roll, but here comes cure wounds. Oh, it didn't roll it after all. 
Is it not working? There we go. Okay, so 12 points of healing on the cure wounds. Okay. Um, that heals the guard. Um, actually heals him back up fully. And um, and then healing word on on the coach driver will actually bring him back up fully too. So um, he is obviously stable and awake, um, but he's down prone on the ground, kind of scratching his head from the from the beating that he took and shaking his head. You can say anything or do anything else. I guess I'll move over to the woman on the ground and the little boy. Okay. And uh, I'll get okay. into position to drag her away. I don't know if I don't think I can still do okay. this. I think that would be an action to drag her. It would be an action to probably move her. Yes. To I'll let me move you where you would go. You'd be right there. And if you want to drag her out of the well, that's an action. Okay, so I'll move you right there. Okay, sound good? Sounds great. Okay, Theros. Let's do some more bashing. All right, uh, you connect solidly with your great axe this time, or the Graxel, as it were. For 12 Graxel. slashing damage, you put a massive gash in his uh, fore front right leg. Um, nice hit. And uh, he's bleeding pretty darn good. Um, but it is the bear's turn. And um, he is not impressed with what you just did to him. So with his other paw, mighty paw, he takes a swing at you, Theros. Um, did I? That's not what I wanted to do. I'm rolling initiative one. again. Okay, and might help if I actually swing the right one. I keep putting my mouse in the wrong spot. Okay. Um, yeah, he takes his massive uh, claw and uh, rakes it right across your chest for 16 slashing damage. Well. For slashing, my AC is 17. Oh, yeah, I guess you did a 22. All right. Yeah. All right. And then, uh, to bite Kenna. Yes. And misses. She dances nimbly out of the way. As uh, she sees it coming, she is quite adept at doing those kind of things. All right, Fliegen. He, you see the bear take a big old chunk out of the chest of Theros, your friend. Who I'd like to remind you would like to throw me across the room. <laughs> no, I'm tossing jokes already. Always. I will run up here because I'm not very smart, and I will try to stab. Uh, you'll need to probably get one more closer, which you can. That's fine. But... All right. Yes, you are able to stab him. And you get sneak attack damage on top of that. So, eight piercing with your dagger. Your daggers are wicked, as we talked about, but he's a dagger master. Would he have advantage for flanking with me? Well, he already hit, so... Never mind, then. Yeah. All right, and then your sneak of damage was one. All right, uh, the bear is bleeding quite heavily, and he's starting to stagger around even more from, looks like, loss of blood. Gore. Can I change weapons without losing any time to charge? Yes. Yeah, you can change weapons. Then, because Fleegan's not very smart, Groar will charge with his battle axe. Okay. Doesn't look like you can get close enough to engage him in melee, because your movement is 25 feet, I think. Ah, uh, dwarves. If I go there. That's not, yeah, that's 30 feet. You can only move 25 feet. 
Uh, okay. Well, then I guess I have to shoot again from there. Yeah. <laughs> you realize your short legs aren't going to get you. You could also move and... closer, too. And then you can always move closer if you want to, yeah. You can move and attack. And you're going to hit with your bow, so you can also move the guy where you to. All right. Four piercing damage. Uh, that sticks in his side. Uh, he hasn't gone down yet, but he looks like he's about to. Kenneth? Okay. I am going to... Yeah, just uh, smack on him again. Okay. Dance around with your sword a little bit and pokey pokey. All right. Go ahead and roll damage for me. It's going to hit. All right. Um, I would like you to describe to me how you take this bear, this big, massive bear down. Um, with a very nimble... Uh, the nimbleness of a uh, spell dance, uh, spell dancer of the uh, pirouette of blades uh, dance that I am in. Uh, I swing around the bear up between its legs and take both of its uh, uh, um, hamstrings, foom foom, and then oh. as it falls, I just pierce it in the back. <laughs> nice, and with a flourish, you take it down. And it uh, it falls to the ground, um, uh, crashes to the ground, um, uh, without falling on top of anybody. And uh, shortly after it hits the ground, you hear um, you hear some shouts from behind you, and uh, um, bear stakes for all. <laughs> um, uh, both uh, Borag and uh, Brian. Uh, Brian um, who is uh, uh, the monk of the troop uh, comes running up to uh, to see what the commotion is all about and uh, realizes that you all have taken down uh, this massive bear and uh, saved the child and and uh, obviously the uh, the driver and the guards and everything like that and Mark says oh 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 my Zatis wow I knew you could do such things but but even this impresses me, my friends. Wow! Tell me, tell me the tale. What's, what's ha what has happened here? This bear smells like it is drunk. It was acting very uh, oddly. I'll move that woman away so she doesn't get covered in blood and stuff and wake up to a giant bear dead next to her and call her Yuntus to follow me away from it. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, she begins to stir when you uh, start to pull around, and, and then she wakes up, and you help her up. The uh, coach driver, uh, although scared, is uh, quite thankful. Uh, thank, thank you, thank you, good sir. I, I, uh, I don't know. I can't remember quite what happened, but uh, oh my, oh my head, oh, oh. But I, I see, I see that you're helping the lady here. Let let me help the lady. And um, you almost died. My goddess Kisma chose to save you. Oh, oh! Thank you, thank you, my friend. Oh, that is quite wonderful. And oh, lady, lady, lady of Devern, oh, uh, come here. And um, she stands up, and uh, she's a, a bit embarrassed. Uh, she has um, um, dirt on her uh, on her dress, and uh, her parasol has been crushed. But uh, she doesn't seem too concerned about that. She says, "Oh, oh, wow, uh, my son, Smidley." Smedley, come here, come here. And, uh... He's uh, here. Said, yes, uh, Smedley runs over and he says, Mama, these men! You should have seen it, they are amazing! Well, these, these... The, and, and, the, and, the, and the lady over here, they, they saved me, and oh, this man! And he looks up at Quimber, and he just has these eyes of adoration for the fact that you've come over and you've saved him. He says, he says, wow! When... When I grow up, I, I want to be like you. Mama, can, can I be like him? And she says, so, son, son, you know what these people are. And you know what they're like. But they, they did save us. So, so I, I think, uh, you know, you, it's, it's, it's worth something. It's worth something to you also. And she hands That's a gold piece. So 
Yunta slips into your mother. You are better off with her. Anyways, Theros took the beast down along with Fliegen and Kenna and Gror. I just merely helped you f and your mother from dying. Oh, well, I, I, I'm so thankful for you and you all. You're, you're amazing and, and I want to know more. I want to see more. I want to, I want to be just like you. And oh my, oh my, look at the chest of that one. Oh, and he kind of, he kind of uh, swaggers or swoons around a little bit as he sees the. The, the blood and everything that's starting to pour from uh, Theros' chest, and you're kind of a little dizzy and kind of uh, bent over a bit. But uh, Brayon um, is actually has the ability to heal. He's uh, part monk, part cleric. And uh, he comes over and he says, Oh, my Zatis, I am so proud of what you have done. And uh, he says a prayer to Kismia as he places his hand upon your chest and, uh, and heals your wounds. Um, and so... You are going to get 12 hit points. That helps. Um, so he heals you up there. And um, yeah, Borg is Thank uh, you. quite impressed. Thank you. So, so oh, that, each... hit, that did not feel good. Oof, that hit would have put me down. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing uh, the brute took the brunt of that one. <laughs> no kidding. Um, oh, father, father, you should see this. Come, t take a look at this bear. Uh, While that's going on, can Groar try to inspect the bear, see if sure. any of the alcohol, you know, seems familiar, yeah, scent-wise, yeah. something we brew? I can't really <laughs> detect what it is. Has it been, you know, been... Given lots of beer, whiskey. Yeah, you know. with your with your skill as a brewer, um, that's uh, not only a great idea. Take inspiration for that. Go ahead and mark inspiration on your sheet. What that'll allow you to have is the chance to re-roll, essentially advantage on a roll uh, at any one point. Um, so um, know that you got that. Also, along with that, um, and you can use that at any point you you so decide. Um, also, along with that. Um, I want you to make a perception check with advantage, please. Um, okay. Would the... Would the bear's skin be useful for like a uh, like a fur blanket or? Um, you Make know, um, I I would say that uh, you actually. Well, would you mention that out loud? Yeah, are you thinking that to yourself? So, um, so you mention out loud the question about if the the bear's skin might make a good uh, blanket, and uh, Borak hears that. Oh, oh, my friend, my. Uh, friend, uh, yes, you think well. Uh, yes, the both the both the fur, if we can get the stench of this whatever it is off of it, um, would uh, come in quite handy for us. Yes, and uh, the guards, uh, the guards themselves are uh, very appreciative, especially the one that almost got killed um, for what you've done, and um, they they say do what you will with this. Um, we're just going to kind of go back over to our post. They're a little bit embarrassed at, uh, at what happened. Um, but uh, they no longer seem to regard you with uh, disdain or trepidation. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, you, you impressed them. You two were um, fearless. You charged right in without any hesitation. Your king will be proud. Could I get you a drink, perhaps? Nice stiff drink. Uh, well, we are on duty, but maybe later to off duty we could take you up on that one. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Please do. Um, I will start uh, doing what is necessary to skin the bear and prepare. Okay, the brand meat, meat and, and everything else. So yeah. definitely need uh, the meat. Yeah, Bran and um, actually uh, Cray, 
uh, Cray comes over as well. So Brian and um, Borag and Cray and you who are helping do that. Let me while you're doing that, let me get something real quick. Well, um, we're going to with that too, but are his three arrows retrievable or or still usable? Yeah, yeah. You can go ahead and retrieve those and put them back in your. Shall we do this gruesome task, perhaps at a more discreet location than the entrance to our carnival? Valid. Shall we well, get a small cart? And we would want to carry a 15-foot-tall bear somewhere, though. <laughs> Feet of strength. And my lady, perhaps you should get inside the carnival with your son and, and, and enjoy the night as if this, or enjoy the day as this never happened. Brothers. <laughs> Discreet. <laughs> so I'm gonna drag. I'm gonna drag the barrow here. I'll say that yeah, be all y'all uh, that are doing it, and uh, obviously Borag, who's very strong, and Brain and Cray, you all are able to kind of move it back over behind um, the the wagons into the the tree area and stuff here. So it's kind of inconspicuous and, and out of that area. So you guys can all move over to that. Give me a moment to read through something because I still want to answer the question of uh -huh. uh, the the drink here. Just need to check something real fast. Oh, this is Up a new cell. one. Move bear carcass now. By the way, on YouTube, uh, Alfini is time and uh, was listening in on us. Oh, cool. Well, welcome, good wizard. Welcome, indeed. Um, Saw a great one. He is uh, at a convention, so I believe he may stepped away because but he did join us and listen for a while cool. and this evening Fliegen after we're done with this labor we'll have bear steaks um, uh, bear? you guys notice as you're, as you're skinning the bear that there are splinters of wood stuck in its hide um, and uh, you d deduce from that that uh, it looks like it may have smashed through some boxes or barrels recently. In fact, you pick some of the wood splinters out and you uh, look at them. And one of the things that uh, Gror uh, is uh, very knowledgeable about is what uh, what barrel wood looks like and how it uh, how it's made. And, and notices that it's probably it probably had smashed or gotten into some barrels that were full of some liquor. It's um, been barrel this bear was trying to eat one of these barrels, I think, and then they all fell upon him. He smashed them. He's covered in it. This bear was a mess. <laughs> yes, he was. Oh, you know what? I want you to roll a d20, please. Sorry, you cut out a little bit. I'd like you all to roll a d20, each one. Okay. And let me know if anybody rolls a 19. I rolled a 19 minus 6. <laughs> nice. I rolled a 9. Okay. I got the highest so far. I got a 2. Uh, yeah, I see that. Okay. Where did this beast have gotten into so many barrels to get itself drunk? It may have left well, uh, the behind. Yeah, well, Grower notices that, uh, you know, there's a, obviously it crashed through the woods, uh, um, crashed through the woods from the road there, uh, right to the north of the road there. And uh, so, I don't know, you guys talk amongst you. This bear must have come through the woods there. We might find where these barrels were if we follow this trail. And perhaps what might have driven the bear into such a frenzy. Hmm. That's a good idea. I would hate to um, have our people meet, eat, eat of its flesh if it uh, ends up being corrupted. I don't think it's likely it doesn't a like alcohol. carnival without <laughs> Alcohol tenderizes meat. It'll be the best <laughs> bear meat ever. <laughs> I think Theros tenderizes meat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty good at that as well. Well, you guys did a pretty good job of uh, taking uh, Fleeg and diced it up uh, pretty darn good with his dagger. Um, so I have renamed that dagger Bear's Eye. 
Bear's eye, yes. I mean, he stuck it right in its socket, right <laughs> off the bat, for sure. Not bullseye, bear's eye. Bear's, bear's eye. eye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking it's about break. the same size, but angrier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Theros yeah, gets it. Cool, and I'll throw another dagger in. Theros gets inspiration for that. But... All right. Um, so Barrels what though? What's that? Barrels of what? Oh my DGM! What does this barrel bear reek of? Uh, he reeks of some sort of spirit. Um, you're, you can't identify it. It's definitely some sort of spirit, uh, not something that you may have known. Um, but it was definitely he got into some barrels while he was drunk. Um, Let us check our stocks and see if he'd gotten into it. This is not ours. It, yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, he would know that. It's ours. okay. I'm pretty um, sure Groar knows what ours smells like. He there does since his parents there. since his parents run the uh, the right, still right. yeah <coughs> yeah all right so what are you guys ah. wanting to do at this point? I wish to go speak to one of the guards and ask him where the local tavern distillery alcohol generation place is in this area. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you over the elephant. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, to the guard yeah, he, here, I'll speak. Excuse me. Yes. Do you know where there is alcohol? Is there a uh, tavern nearby? The, oh, the there's, town. The, well, there's 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 a few taverns in Nevermore, but um, which one has the biggest and most number of casks? I don't think uh, the bear came from the direction of Nevermore. It's gotta uh, be someplace. He here. he over he overhears him. Yeah, I don't think the it came from the direction. He says, uh, um, "Yeah, no, the bear did not come from the town." And I I feel that we would have known that there was a massive fifteen foot tall bear in town, uh, my friend. But, um, but I am wondering of, of of a wagon or or being transported along the road. If somebody uh, is transporting it out to the other town. Well, this uh, we're on the main road, and uh, if, we should uh, follow this barrels, this bears, and the barrels pieces. There's an obvious trail that takes this way. Well, since we're going to be derelict in our duties here, we should probably let my father know. I was just going to suggest that we should. So, check with so the okay, so you I should look ahead. <laughs> So you you tell uh, you tell Borag that uh, you'd want to inspect it. Ah, uh, that is yes. Um, uh, it's well, the the bear kind of scared away the crowds. Unfortunate to us, but they're kind of working their way back. So it's not as busy as it uh, normally would be. So I I would say yes. Uh, uh, it's important for us to know what what may have happened, uh, uh, young ones. So yes, go go investigate. I think that is a I think that is a good idea and, and be helpful. And, and report back to me what you find. Hey, do the uh, food uh, wagons cook bear meat? Because there's going to be a lot of it. Uh, they can, yes. They do now. It's yeah. been uh, now. already seasoned with uh, whatever it drank. <laughs> it's tenderized, it's right? tenderized. Yes. Of course. And partially pre, you know, chopped. Okay. <laughs> All right, so... <clears throat> Uh, so as the crowd begins to kind of meander back around, they some are giving you kind of sideways, some uh, um, interested glances and surprised looks. Uh, the uh, the guards are seem impressed by what you've done. Uh, the young child Smedley uh, is like, "Bye, bye, good luck, bye. I hope to see you again. I want to be like you someday." And as his mom kind of ushers him away into the carnival, and uh, you guys follow the fairly obvious trail of broken branches and uh, wide meandering paw prints through the heavy woods for some 300 feet or so. And at the end of the track, in a clearing, you find a small dilapidated shed that's about 15 feet on each side. Um, there you go. It uh, looks to have been a lone storage shack since there are no other structures close by. Hmm. The remnants of the flimsy door hang from warped hinges. 
A once sturdy lock lies on the ground nearby, crushed and mangled, and the ground around the shed looks soaked, though it hasn't rained or snowed recently, and inside, wrecked barrels and shredded sacks litter the dirt floor. The strong smell of alcohol is everywhere. Um, near the shed are the remains of a body sprawled on the ground. What do you guys do? Uh, someone should probably go back and get one of the guards, but maybe after we secure any barrels of spirits that might benefit I'm thinking, the troop. I'm what definitely size thinking being body. And is it wearing any kind of uniform that we've seen, like the town guard, perhaps? Um, it's a human male in thirties. Um, you notice that he's been badly mauled. Um, uh, horrific gashes on his body, especially the arms and torso. Um, likely that's what killed him. I mean, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Um. Darker stains in the dirt reveal he bled profusely. Um, Picture seems much... to indicate he's missing a foot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, most of his chest. It's somewhat diff difficult to differentiate from the puddle of spilled alcohol and the uh, the muddy ground and the in the blood and everything like that. But um, um, he's got a decently crafted short sword on him and a dagger, um, as well as a fine fur cap. Um, although it's, uh, pretty blood-stained. Um, he's got a, uh, coin purse on him. Pretty fat. Um, uh, so you also... Anybody else here hiding. Okay, okay, go ahead and give me a perception check, please. Whoever said that. Okay. Um, uh, just looking around, Quim Quember, um, it, you don't seem to see anybody around. Um, are you guys going to actively kind of look around? Yes. We need to walk around to the casks to look for any kind of marks on them or anything yeah. that indicate okay. where they're from. Okay. All right. I well, would one like to check out his hat and, and his dagger. Okay. And coin purse. Yeah. And coin that purse. Okay. I have my axe and shield out now too, just right. in case. Obviously. Well, there's... you guys do generally, yeah. You gen generally area. Um, and um, you don't uh, you don't see anybody around uh, that uh, might be jumping on you there, um, and. You uh, check the barrels, and it seems like um, there are a number of them in the back of the shed that haven't been broken open uh, that could uh, potentially be used by the troop uh, if we wanted to. If you wanted to carry those back, uh, some a few of the things that you do happen to notice is there is uh, what looks to be a large sigil painted on the door, and I will show that to you right now. Um, there you go. You see that painted on the door. Um, you guys also notice that uh, the man has several tattoos. Um, most of them are difficult to discern beneath all of his wounds. Uh, but uh, there is one sigil on his chest that actually matches the same one that's uh, on the door that I just showed you. Um, Uh, Camber, go ahead and give me a medicine check, please. Uh, yeah, just in case you didn't figure it out by the bear, um, or a large wild animal. Um, all right, so Fleegan said he, was it Fleegan who wanted to look in the purse? Theros, I can't remember. I want to look at the dagger and the, and the purse. Okay. Yeah, nothing special about the dagger any different than that you would already have. I mean, you could potentially add it to your inventory if you want to. But super yep. special. The, the short sword is, um, you know, relatively good shape there. Um, 
but uh, standard short sword. So if somebody needs that or you want to add that to your list of things you had. And if I didn't make myself clear earlier, the, the Lady Diverna actually gave each one of you a gold piece. So, um, all right. Uh, and uh, as we talked about uh, last week, I think, uh, I'm not sure how much you guys remember money. Uh, in this, I, I put a handout in there that talks about money and how much money the gold pieces worth bucks, and we're going to use economy similar to today's economy. So, say a chicken costs on average a cooked chicken costs on average say five to ten dollars. You know, um, that would be similar to a silve would be a dollar. Um, so five to ten silves, something like that. Um, ten. Um, a uh, Electrum piece or a lek is worth $10. so you know as we talk about things think about them You know how much is a beer how much is a chicken? Um, so anyhow, uh, you guys check the uh, coin purse and uh, if no one else is going to object I will take the other short sword as well Take it got it. Yep. All right, so you guys check inside the coin purse. Uh, there's actually six it gold. Might be cursed and it doesn't work on bears Yeah um, good amount of money in there. So there's six gold, 19 silves, and there's actually a, uh, there's a note which has a map on it in the bag as well. So let me show that to you. Here you go. All Quick right. question. Is that fur cap salvageable? Can uh, it could be up? something that you could wear, but it wouldn't be worth Anything, but it's uh, it's pretty blood soaked too, so you'd have to clean it. But uh, I mean, you guys are Hanatas, so I mean, <laughs> yeah, take it with me. Can. Especially you know, make you like, keep yeah. your head warm. I mean, you don't you have hair on. You. That might help because uh, it's it's still it's getting it's getting towards midwinter, so it's going to be getting really nasty here pretty soon. You could probably use that to clean it. All right, so um, the map. You guys see that the map and the message. Yes. Okay. All right. So, Dirk, we catched old. Uh, I'm going to read this message to you. Dirk, we catched old Ferdebrin and worked him over for longer and a man been able to take. But we wouldn't have give just before he done breathed his last, uh, though he said something regarding that old well east of the town. Now there be three old wells that I be knowing about. Me and Charlie gonna check that two of them in the hills, uh, but we gonna be back in two days. You waits for them shizats to clear. You guys know what a shizat is? It is a... Uh, um, yeah, it's a, a derogatory term. Yeah, a derogatory term for... Isn't it Ebonics for a poo-poo? Well, yeah, pretty much. I mean, if, about the same. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, if somebody refers to you as that, that. So you wait for them shizats to clear out and check that well, then done be right near the southeast end of that field in the woods where they're all at. Uh, I draw you a map to where it be in case you done be remembering, and don't forget that me and Charlie be knowing how many golds was in them sacks. And it's signed Clem. And then there's a map there, and it kind of shows the Carnival um, and where it's at, and then shows a big old stump, and then off to the southeast there, the old well. Um, this be so, Nerf. <laughs> this be Nerf, yes. So you guys have a pretty good idea of where it shows the well is there. So We pass um, a big stump. What's that? We pass a big stump or anything? Oh, it's on the other side of the road, isn't it's it? It's on the it's on the other side. It's it's back over by actually it's back over behind uh, your father's uh, your father's tent uh, where he sells or wagon where he sells the the spirits and stuff. Is that uh, sigil they're... emblem on any of those barrels or casks? Or, um, is it match or is there any other markings mm -hmm. on them? Um, it uh, there's no other mark barrels uh, that I think. Hang on a second. Give me a perception check, please. 
I would also like to inspect that symbol and see if it's uh, anything that I can decipher. If it has any kind of arcana meaning. Um, go ahead and give me an arcana check. Or a history check, your choice. I'm also going to want to venture inside. I still think uh, there's a possibility somebody could be... Okay, you rolled arcana. That was a fairly good arcana check there. All right. Um, you were checking around inside the, you said? Yeah, after you're done with those rolls, I'd like okay. to look inside. Yeah. Um, all right. So, Gore, give me a perception check then, Kimber. Um, all right. Um, no, actually, you do not uh, believe that uh, the sigil means anything magical or fluvian um, that you can think of. Um, but um I will sketch it down though. Okay. Yep. You guys have that now in your in your uh journal back to it if you need. Um but yeah, you do a sketching of that All right. Um I think we should uh we should take these casks out and hide them in the woods and then go get the guards and show them what had happened. And then we can enjoy these casks later tonight. Uh, why show the guards anything? We should just take them back to the camp. M Mighty hey. Dungeon Master, was there a mass, a marking though on the casks? I didn't hear that from the perception roll. Uh, there was not any markings on the casks. But the guards may know what this marking is. Fine, ask them they afterwards. Also, they don't they need also any may of this need, liquor. But they may need, well, that's why we're going to hide it in the woods. We must take this map to the Bravda. And someone should investigate what is in the sacks, I guess, that it discusses. What sacks? There were torn open sacks on the inside. Uh, they're discussing how much gold is in a sack in the note. Ah, ah, yes. Then we'll need to look into the bear's stomach, it appears. I don't think the bear ate the sacks. I think the sacks are by this well. I think this guy was maybe going to be able to get some treasure, perhaps. That's what it sounds like. Which well, he apparently doesn't here. need. It. Since we've found him, we can probably get that treasure for him instead, I think. I like the idea. And there's plenty of treasure here, too. Let's take this back to the... So do you we think should they, hide. they made this, this drink themselves, or did they steal it? Is there any rhyme or reason to this shed and the, the, the fact that these kegs are here, or barrels are here? You asking me that? Yes, from just like what we can look around, like is there any equipment? Is there... Is nice, there you know, it, just, like, it looks like a storage shed. Bear... You know, be the not open. and it's obvious since they're not marked, and it's in an obviously, you know, off the the beaten path kind of mm -hmm. place, right? Mm -hmm. Would this maybe be some sort of smuggling, perhaps? You know that they're. Um, go ahead and give me a insight, please. Which one? Insight. I use my inspiration with this, if you want to. What do I do for that? Anything extra? Just just roll it, and you would get advantage on that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, it's good right. in this one, right? So, uh, yeah. Um, so, um, you have an interesting thought, and I would say that with your inspiration, you actually rolled high enough to kind of piece together, and I would, I would give information to your statement that... Um, that uh, this would probably be something to do with smugglers, um, that they're smuggling some sort of liquor. Um, and uh, it's a smuggler's uh, shed, most likely a storage shed or something like that. Uh, potentially the the sigil might be some sort of uh, indication of who they are, but it's nothing you guys have seen before. So at that, I will start taking out casks and hiding them off the beaten path in an area. 
Well, this whole, just gonna isn't this whole area already kind of off the beaten path? We need to get more yeah. guys to take it with us. Well, how many casts do we have to take back? Mm, maybe a half dozen. Half dozen? Oh, six? Yeah. We might as well I bring, you know, one. a couple more. <laughs> Yes, but we don't want to do it while the guards are here. Well, you know what? Let's wait. Let's that's, report that's this the to the Robda. Let's let's move it from the smuggler shed to a place that we know where it is in the woods. Exactly. And then we can go back to get the Bravda, wait for the guards to be off duty, and then we can bring it back to us, and then we can go investigate that well. Well, this trail wasn't hard for us to follow. If any guards come back to relieve the other ones, they might investigate and find what we have found. That's why we're moving the casks. Yes, I agree with you, brother. We can hold the shed here, right? What's that? And we can move this body, so that's not obvious. It could just look no, like no. the same storage smugglers intended it to be. But they leave might. The the guards leave the body in the broken casks. We don't care about those. Right. And the guards may recognize this man, so it is probably not a bad idea to leave him here and leave the sigil as it is and ask them questions. I don't they think might tell us who we're, we're dealing with. I don't think we should do that without the, the Bravda's direction. Of course. I think we should get this all out of the way so that nobody can see what's gone on here necessarily until maybe he comes and looks at this. What? I'm, like, I'm, if the guards come down here because we've walked here and they see a body, it's going to be a lot bigger deal than if they come and they just see the shed closed up. Same thing with that's the That's why we're going to move the barrels, hide them, then go back and report it to the guards so that they can come and see it. Then we'll worry about finding Why not just allowed. hide them in the shed? Because, because they're going to be going to get anything shed. that's in the shed. This is brother, I I would rather them find the body and have all of their answers at one time rather than come here, see what they see, and then search for the body. I think uh, I think uh, you guys um, <clears throat> are realizing that uh, there's a lot of pre pre prejudice against you and. Right there would be questions towards you and it may be to leave the crime scene as it were intact so it doesn't look like you could be uh, held um, responsible for what happened. Um, and it sounds like, you know, some, some of you, the conscience is saying, you know, take this stuff and hide it. And some of you are saying we need to be careful that uh, we do something like that. We could get in trouble for this and it may not be good troop. So, you know, go seek the your again your teenage. Ah, uh, father yeah. didn't warn us first. not to get in trouble on such a night. Perhaps we should see if anybody had survived this, and then we could get a reward. The note Look did for say that too. The note the says that, the note says that they're not good people. They're apparently smugglers. This is a the only one who's left here while his other two partners are gone. And to me, that means perhaps the stuff of bags of gold at a well and maybe some extra liquor that we have from these barrels once he makes that decision. I'm just saying if we at least close up the shed, all of that stuff may last for him to come and see it. So you're saying go get the Bravda, bring him back. Or, or maybe some of us stay here and guard the area. We can do that from bushes and, you know, a, a, a location in case anybody does come. But some I of us... I should go very back and get my father. And, no and it shouldn't just be you, good friend. Alcohol. It should be more. Just in case there's, you know, somebody to be encountered on the way. The spirits could bring in a good price from the patrons though I, I think we should just grab two because we have two very big strong people or three bring them back while the people who are not bringing the casks can bother the guards and distract them while the other ones bring the 
liquor into the cabinet and then we can have the guards go to the shed and say that's what we found and they'll not be the wiser i don't think any of that should be done in the broad of you know daylight or without the bravda's direction you should tell us before we touch another thing just a point of uh, clarification how far off the beaten path was this about 300 feet so we're we're well within shouting distance. Yeah, it's easy can, enough to get. Can, so. But shouting across the guards or anybody else. Or not, not plenty Lord of shouting. Lord only knows where the here is, right? I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is that we're not a far distance from the King's Road. We're really quite close. So yeah, right, to exactly. go back and get the Bravda and then going back into the woods is not a problem. That's a matter of, and of it's, all it's five minutes. Yeah, that's, a yeah, that's, that, that's fine. And I can run and do that. As smart as he is, he also might say, well, I'm not going to walk out there in the daylight either. It'll still be there at night and we'll go check it then. Why don't we go look at this well in the daylight? Because you brought me a piece of paper that nobody we'll noticed. Him. Like, carrying we'll, a let giant him. Cake. we'll let him make that decision. But let's take the note with us at least. Yes. Of course. Okay. And perhaps okay. this purse that it seems like Fleegan is maybe hidden in some pocket or orifice. There's no sword, there's no pouch, and there's no hat, and there's no note. Or dagger. We never saw any, or dagger, or we didn't see any of that. Let's go back and get and the broth. I did see it when I we were... I give up my hat? <laughs> I think it has no. to go in the pile no. later. Yes. They're just, you're agreeing. It, what he's saying is you're all agreeing. That, we're all um, agreeing that there is no hat, there's no dagger... There's no purse, and there's no sword. Oh, None of that was found here. Nothing to to the there. Here. Now let's go get the Bravda, and there was no note. We're going to go get the Bravda. I'll run and return back, back and get the Bravda. I'll be right back. Okay. All right, so it Somebody sounds... should go with him. So, I mean, he's my buddy. But... Okay, so Gora goes, uh, goes with uh, Kenna. Is that right? Yeah. You guys go get uh, four eggs. My bad. What's that? What's that? Uh, Theros was gone. All right. Um, I think uh, I think Kenna was going to go with. Am I correct? Am I getting disconnected, or can you guys hear? Me? I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, we're going to run and get either. Okay. Okay. So uh, you guys. Find. Yeah, um, you guys actually uh, back. Uh, you find Borag. He was just uh, leaving the uh, the cook's tents after getting the bear taken care of, and he was just starting to head back towards the the wrestling fields. And uh, as you guys uh, come uh, come out and uh, walk over and find him, the guards kind of watch you as you walk through. You go over and you tell Borag what's going on, and he's you know definitely agrees with uh, your ideas and. So Um, he looks at the guards and he says to them, uh, I think we're going to, we're going to need your help. And so he actually calls the guards with you guys. Okay. Um, he didn't necessarily disagree with what you guys did and he appreciates what you did, but he wanted the, the guards to come along. So he brings the guards with you guys, um, back to the location and, um, uh, the guards follow you all back to the shed. Um, and, uh, to make a long story short, uh, because they're appreciative of what you did for them back with the encounter with the bear, um, they're willing to actually just kind of look the other direction and say, you know, they well, they do tell you the one thing that they do tell you is that um, the sigil is a sign of a group of people that most don't speak about, uh, but they have knowledge of, but they're not going to they're going to deny that they have knowledge of um, a organization called the Shiners. Okay. So the guards tell you that uh, they know of an organization called the Shiners, but um, they're kind of doing this on the QT. Um, they're going to look the other direction about you finding anything and salvaging anything. Um, they believe that you didn't do this because it's obvious that the man was killed by the bear. And... Um, you're welcome to Finder's Keeper. In their opinion, as a, you know, you just scratched our back, we'll scratch yours. 
and we'll kind of let uh, sleeping dogs lie. And um, um, they go back to their post, and you guys can do what you want to with the uh, with the liquor. Sound good? Sounds then the good. liquor's coming back. Very good. <laughs> yeah. All right. And the reason I didn't role play that is because I two of them. So, um, okay. All right. So uh, you guys get the barrels of liquor back over into storage, and uh, you come back in. We have a little bit of time left. Um, what all would you like to do at this point? Was there a desire to... Um, um, Should go to the well. Talk with Rabda, or uh, if 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 he will let us go, I would like to go investigate that well before okay. anyone else okay. can get to it, since okay. it looks like we're the first people to find out about it, other than the two that are not going to be back for until after we're gone. He is quite intrigued by this the note and what it says and what may be at the well, and if there's money, I mean, obviously use it, and if we can find the money and it's finders keepers that kind of thing, which you guys kept that information away from the, from the guards, obviously. They don't even know about the map yep. in, the, in the note. Um, then, you know, if we can get to the money first, then all the better. And, uh, uh my Satis, you think, you think well, I, we have taught you well, we have. So, if, uh, if your desire is to spread your wings uh, a little bit more this day, you've already shown your prowess for being, uh, heroic in your deeds of taking down a, a a bear of this sorts, then by all means go investigate. We can, we, we there's, there's many Frenta and others. We can keep things going, and there's plenty of time left in the day. It's still, it's still not long after, not long after High, high Soul. So, so you guys decide you want to go? Absolutely. Yeah. After a quick stop by the food place, because we never got still breakfast. haven't eaten. <laughs> Have some still bear steaks. Go eat. Good idea. Okay. Grab some food for the road. Who can resist okay. a map? Okay, let me make sure I'm not missing anything at that point, or we may come back there in a little bit. Um. Just a moment here. Okay, yeah, let me read a little bit of this to you for a little bit. Um, and uh, your little friend Smedley's over there, and uh, he's actually throwing a bit of a temper tantrum. Ma, ma, I want some of that food. It looks really good. Can I have some of that food? Really, ma. Oh, son, son, you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I can give you some of that. Oh, oh thank you, ma. Thank you. And uh, um, she. Uh, buys him what looks to be a, a nice uh, piece of meat on a stick and uh, he's sitting there enjoying it and munching it. wander over towards him uh, in, in the tents over there and he sees you and he goes oh my you guys are awesome tell me tell me how did you get so awesome Anybody? All you need to do, Smedley, is find what you're good at and practice and train and dedicate yourself to it. And you will be great at whatever that is. Or I'll add, as long as you listen to your parents and you stop throwing fits and making a spectacle of yourself. Yes, and you too can wiggle your ears if you really try. Ooh, ear wiggling. He seems to kind of ignore the admonishment. He likes the ear wiggling. He seems fascinated by that. He's like, how do you do that? Tell me how you do that. Show me. Practice. Show me again. Lots and lots like, of practice. Practice? Well, what? What? No, show me. Show me now. Show me. I want to know. Show me now. Mom, make make the funny man show me his ears. How do, how do... 
Mom. Mom. I'm just going to keep walking. Yeah, I'm right, right there with him. All right. Well, this area of Carnival is always busy. Currently, about half a dozen people stand before uh, what's called the Wagon of Tastes, and another four or five are in the line of Wagon of Smiles. I'm going to show you guys that picture real quick. Um, Kenna, Kenna seems mildly uncomfortable by the, uh, the, the attention of the child. Uh, How is that fur face? cap of yours? Does it need any repairing? It needs cleaned. <laughs> so standing over here, you can see and smell the enticing spicy aroma of Sunnessy's savory cooking. Uh, Sunnessy is the cook, and uh, smoke rises from behind her wagon. And uh, you guys uh, spend some time walking over uh, behind the wagon, which is where you guys normally go, almost without thinking you alter your course, to walk to the back of the brightly painted wagon of tastes. You can barely see Sunnessy through the obscuring ar aromatic steam and the smoke of the cook fires as she's managing a dozen different pots and pans. And she looks far busier than when she simply, she's simply cooking for the troop. Her food is very popular with hunters like and people of Nevermore have never tasted anything of the sort. Even the Hanatas are occasionally surprised by her experimental yet always delicious cookery. Um, bear steaks is uh, special on the menu today. Um, uh, three young Frenta, actually four young Frenta, uh, Sangi, Han, and Felicia, and Fixie assist her in cooking, collecting coin, and serving the food. Um, um, you guys can pick from a wide variety of delicious food. You know, bear kebabs, um, zariso, which is a stew, pole bread, which is the fly, fried flatbread, or gaka, which are stuffed peppers, um, cabbage rolls, um, things like that. And so you guys uh, are able to uh, um, get some food from her because, you know, it's it's free as part of the um, part of being part of the Hanata. And you guys are able to fill your belly Um and uh, if you need to take a short rest, you're welcome to. Um, we'll if for some to reason, go to his parents and try to discuss those kegs or, or barrels and what he has found, and maybe that sigil in case it might be familiar. Yeah, um, his mom runs the uh, the uh, wagon next door, which is the uh, um, the wagon of smiles, and um, we'll actually talk with her in a minute. But to actually see. Um, Borag uh, comes wandering by and he says, Oh, is that just, um, you know, the day is long. Yes, you need some food, but uh, I think it's important that you go uh, check on the well uh, before you uh, get much farther into being distracted and doing much else. So uh, he admonishes you to head off to the well at this point, which I think is important, especially with the time that we have this evening. Is that okay? Yes, I'm done. Off, okay. run, spit. I will okay. take yep. some bear steak. Get some smiles from the women, and I'm ready to go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Well, charred um, bear on flat bread. I'm on. Uh, that's that's portable. Okay. So yeah, you guys enjoy that. I was just if you needed to take a short rest while you were eating, you could do so. If you wanted to expend a hit die to be able to get any hit points if you need to. Um, it's entirely up to you if you want to save it for later. Um, I'll save it. Since you have one hit die. Um, okay, so the map is fairly easy to follow. It leads you to a small glade just a few hundred feet to the southeast of Stoof's tent. Um, that's uh, Grower's uh, father's uh, uh, spirit's tent. Sitting in the center of the meadow is an old stone foundation complete with a partially fallen chimney of a long-forgotten homestead. Leafless creepers and vines cover much of the old stone structure, and near the foundation can be seen the round stone remains of lichen and of a lichen and moss-covered well. And let me go ahead and show you that picture. Um, do you see that? Because it looks broken on my screen. I've got it. I see it. You see it? Okay. For some reason, mine, it broke on mine, but that's fine. So as long as you guys can see that, that's good. Okay. Um, that's a pretty uh, little graph picture. So 
uh, that's what you guys see. What do you want to do? I'll scout around the area. Okay. I'm just kind of looking scouting. For foot yeah, looking for people, looking for footprints, looking for anything that looks like anything okay. more modern than the ruins that we found. Okay, give me a perception. What else are you, do what are you guys doing? Um, can I use survival to see what kind of animals are in the area? Large. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and give me your survival on that. I'm going to go over and look down, look in the well. Okay. All right. My ears are wide open to any possible talking, you know, if there's any people that might be here ahead of us that are just behind one of these walls okay. or something. Okay. Fleegan and Kimber, give me uh, perception checks, please. All right. Uh, Gor's uh, checking things out as well. Okay. Um, uh, so looking around, um, it doesn't seem as if there's uh, anybody that uh, um, is uh, in the vicinity as far as animals, you know, your standard uh, tree squirrel, birds. Um, you see a hawk flying off in the distance. Um, uh, maybe hear the the chattering of some um, potentially a chipmunk nearby, something like that. But it's it's getting on towards winter. Most things are probably hibernating. There's really, no bug sounds or anything like that. Um, uh, um, Kenna, yes. you, have an, you have an uncomfortable feeling and an unexplainable sense of dread. Hmm. Okay. Um, you guys look. You guys are looking around. Uh, well, uh, you notice that it uh, seems to have been disturbed recently because the lichen along the edge of the wall has been knocked off where it looks like it would have normally grown across. Um. Um, near the foundation of the house, you find that there are the remains of wood beams and such uh, inside the foundation. Um, the obvious, obvious remnants of a roof that uh, um, had uh, crashed down from the, the, the old home that used to be there. Guys, I've got a bad feeling. I'm not sure. Something is off. Well, I hope it's not from the well. Do you think it's the uh, the guards back there talking about this group called the Shiners that nobody speaks of? Do you think they're despicable people? Perhaps there's an ambush up ahead? What are you worried about, brother? I'm not sure. It just doesn't feel right. You want me to cast a little magic and see what I can see? Hmm. It could be nothing, but stay on guard. All right. Um, with that and the discussion that you guys are having and looking around, Fliggin looks down the well, and um, it uh, it looks like it uh, descends um, quite far uh, because it's midday. Um, it uh, you can you can see oh that it probably descends uh, about 70 feet or so to the bottom uh, and it's a little muddy down there. Um, but it looks like uh, it looks like it's it's possible that that disturbed lichen and stuff looks to show as if somebody may have descended down into the well reef um, as there's a, it's been disturbed along the sides as it goes down. Wow, this is a deep well. Guys, I think somebody's been down here before. Come look, come look. I'll go over and take a look. How, how recent does it seem? Uh, give me a <laughs> insight. Or survival, your choice. Whichever. Usually when I say that, you pick the one that you get a higher modifier. 
I'll uh, look at it with survival. Okay. Um, who's got the higher survival? Tell me which each one of you. I got a four. You both have a four on it? Four. Okay. I have a one. Okay. So the one who has a four, I would go ahead and roll survival. So what that means is you two were helping each other. Okay. 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 All right. So that's a 13. Um, so what were you doing exactly again? With I came trying, to trying to help. determine how it was disturbed. How yeah. recently? How recently? Um, was it disturbed when this like was hidden here, maybe by the note writers, or was um, it disturbed? No, that not that long ago. Probably with you know, it looks like the the scrapes are fairly fresh. And such. But we didn't bring a rope with us, did we? Uh, you guys have uh, kits on you that have ropes. Yeah. Like Dungeoneer's kits or whatever your kit that you guys normally have. Most of those usually. My entertainer's rope. pack may not have rope. Yeah, that might not, but I know I know at least some of you have, have rope. Well, I've got I've got an explorer's pack. So, yeah. all right, Vegan, you want to go down? You may not have rope, but it is a fun pack. Vegan, <laughs> is it really Go dark? clean out the mana core. So, are we gonna are we gonna start throwing the gnome now? Oh, well, we're gonna I we're gonna tie dwarf be down there easily. So, I mean, and we're smallest, they could probably lower us. <sighs> Well, Fleegan Fle 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 can crawl out if the rope breaks. Who else can crawl out? I don't know if my shoulders can go down there. Give me the rope. I really climb that well. I mean, I climb all right, but... We'll tie the rope around the, uh, the Fleegan, and then we'll go Fleegan him down the well. Slowly I don't want to hear any jokes about fishing with Fleegan. How dark is it in the well? I could perhaps help with some light. Um, it's it's Very dark. Uh, with the sun, you can see down to the bottom of the well. You know, once you get down inside there, it's going to be pretty dark, obviously. But I know Fleegan has dark vision. Um, but you guys could see him lowering him down because the sun is pretty much right directly above you. Um, but once he gets down in there, it's it's obviously going to be pretty dark because there's no light source. So are you guys going to lower lower him down with a rope? Is that what the plan is? That is the plan. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. So, um, Fleegan, you descend nearly 70 feet or so to the bottom of the muddy but dry well. Old moss clings to the sides of the well proper, and the smell is dank and musty. As you approach the bottom, the ground beneath you becomes slimy and filled with muck. Um... At the bottom of the well, you see that you are actually in a small cave of stone with a fairly thick layer of mud on the floor. The mosses on the wall are thicker here, and the area is considerably warmer than above ground. In the west, judging from the large rocks and rubble that lie upon the mucky floor, something has dug through the wall to gain entry to the bottom of the well. Beyond, you see a dark tunnel made of worked stone heading off towards the east. It is about eight feet or so wide and perhaps nine or so feet in height. As you regard it, you hear a strange scratching sound echoing from the tunnel. After a moment, the sound stops. So let me show you this and um, show you a picture here. All right, there's the picture. And I'm going to start a little bit of music here. Um, all right. So, um, you guys see the picture? Yes. Yes. Yep. yes. Okay. All right. So that's what Fleegan, that's Fleegan, that's what you see. Okay. So you see that and you hear a scratch, you hear the scratching that then stops. What do, do you I do? Do I see anything down there with my dark vision? No. You see down, uh, you see obviously that there's a tunnel that uh, um, goes off into the distance beyond your vision. But nothing moving. I'm going to step... Oh, well, actually, hold on. Guys, there's a tunnel down here. 
I'm gonna go in a little bit. Don't let go of the rope. So I'm gonna step in just about three feet so I get out of the sun so I can get a better view. How, how far mm. down? What's that? How, how far down is down. the bottom of the well? 70 feet. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to do something here. I'm going to shift the map. Okay. So now you guys should have shifted. You probably all see a dark map. Yep. Um, you want to zoom out to see the revealed area. You're just Legan standing in a, yep. uh, at the bottom of the well. Okay. Got that. Okay, so Fleegan, you head towards the uh, entryway of the tunnel, and I'll reveal a little ways down. So you see a tunnel um, that uh, is uh, an area that looks made of stone and appears to be a rather ancient manufacture. Um, there are many cracks in the stone, and a thin layer of dust lies upon um, there seem to be scuffed areas on the stone as well as drag marks. And the impression of strange rounded footprints in the dust and the passage heads off in a westerly direction. Okay, I'm going to step back to where the light is okay. and see up. I need a dwarf down here! Send the dwarf! I said that in the beginning. Jump! Home can handle jump down in a well. Well, here's a story. some kind of uh, a passageway made with stones and stuff. Oh, did I mention there's also like some kind of monster down here? What? Yeah, it's making... If, if it was a monster, it would have been you already. Don't worry, I'll be right down. And after you get that, bring the big guy down. I think at this point we should all go down. Okay. Did you guys get into those kegs when I wasn't looking? <laughs> okay, so um, is am I understanding you guys right? That you? Yeah. Yeah, we'll all descend. Okay. All right. So you all come on down the well. All right. So, um, yeah. So again, uh, you guys are down there. You should all be able to see where you're at. You can see the hallway going down. Uh, see hallway, ways. hallway. Noise, big scratchy things. Got hey, have fun. I'll be right here. All right, I'll go first. Hold on a second, my brother. Let me cast a, a spell here. I want to see what is ahead of us. Do detect evil. Okay. So, it um, goes so you would know feet. you would you would know within thirty feet if there's evil. Yeah, it lasts uh, concentration okay. up to ten minutes, and if there's something evil, mm -hmm. I'll basically know the direction of it. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else. It don't, doesn't really give me what it is exactly. Just pretty much that there's something there. And if there's okay. more than Fliegen. one. Fliegen. Oh, Fliegen, what makes you think there's a monster down here? Well, you're down here with me. Ah. Zing! <laughs> Mainly he's scared. There are scratchy noises coming from there. When I came down, they stopped. Maybe they're just little tiny spiders. Maybe they're very big spiders. Heck, they're all big to me. Something scratching is probably just getting ready for the winter. Casey, can you snap me too on the map? I can't pull it over. Uh, no, I cannot move you. You have to to be able to see where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. No, you'd have to zoom out and find that location and then zoom in if you need. So let me go left to right. Bottom left. I don't know if I can. So, yeah, bottom left. If you can zoom all the way. But it's I, bottom left down there. The, I can't really tell what's what from there almost. It kind of hides behind the turn order at first, and then you have to zoom back in and get it where you want it. If you double click on the turn order, it collapses it. Ah. Uh, 
Um, I'm okay. still stuck with the map a little, all the way over on the left, but go ahead. Never mind. Okay. All right. Yeah, I can't. I can't control your map. You. Self, fortunately, all I can do is reveal stuff. Um. All right. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, this area is made of uh, work stone and appears to be rather of an ancient manufacturer and there are many cracks in the stone and a thin layer of dust lies upon the floor and there are scuffed areas on the stone as well as drag marks and the impressions of strange rounded footprints in the dust the passage heads off in a westerly direction would i recognize those footprints uh give me a history check or a survival which which whichever one you prefer no, you do not recognize those footprints. In no way, shape, or form. Nope. So, are those even footprints? You're asking. Can anybody else make a roll on those footprints? Uh, if you're wanting to inspect them, yeah, go ahead. All right, I'll do a survival. That survival. Survival, yeah. Yeah. All right. So it looks like um, you know you guys are looking at him. Flegan Flegan has kind of an inkling for a moment, and then thinks, "I don't think I've ever seen stuff." Before. So, um, um, what do you guys want to do? Do we want to continue with casting the uh, detect evil, or was that already done? I've cast it. I'm at the front. The problem with uh, this week of magic is it can't penetrate through this stone. So I'd have to put myself in danger and move down this dark hallway. Would you like me to go in front of you? It would probably be better if Fleegan or I did. Well, I would have to cast a light, so perhaps she should lead the way. I'll take the lead. Mage in the front. <laughs> I shall prepare Javelin. You could go behind me if you wish. Just need to hold my shoulders so I don't bump into anything. Alright. So you I should be fine. I hallway. can get back behind you if I need to. Okay. So is that the marching order? Uh, Kenna, Kimber, Theros. Roar. I've never, never liked the the lightest and most fragile to go first. And the strongest in the middle. I feel awfully protected. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I guess I didn't hear you mention a light source. Are we not using a light source? Well, uh, Kimber would be the only one who may not. Can it have dark vision? I can't remember. I didn't see it on a sheet, so I'm saying no. Uh, Kenna has dark vision. It's right at the top of your sheet. What? Yep. Kenna okay. does have dark vision, and um, Theros Kimber, does. Kimber does not have dark vision, so he would have lights, but you have a light cantrip. Yeah, I could cast it at any time. I just don't want to blind yeah. my brothers until it's needed. Okay, so you can't see it. then. You wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to see down here. Well, my question all. is, brothers, do you want me to cast a light, therefore giving what is ever down this hallway an advantage in seeing us illuminated, or would you rather I step towards the back if anything happens and cast it back there? Quick point of or question: of Can we can we move past each other? Relatively yes. easily in this hallway, because yes. yes. it looks like it's only five feet wide. It's a little more than five feet wide. It's, it's probably more like about seven or eight. So you can you can move past each other. I could cast the light down the hallway. What about Fliegen? You would You're cast quiet. light on something. You would cast it like on something like like your mace or some, or your shield or something. Or like a rock and throw it down the hall. Or a rock and throw it down the yeah the hall if you want to. Or your mace and throw it down the hall, but I don't advise that. <laughs> what about Fliegen? You can see down the hall without any light, and you're quiet. 
and you're sneaky. You're going to cast light on me and throw me down the hall? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> before we <laughs> cast the light, before we cast the light, you go down the hall, you take a look, and you do it quiet and sneaky-like as you are so... There over here, go find a... a is oh, anyone like, else uh, nervous that this whole dungeon area looks like a that we see so far looks like? Looks like what? I didn't hear uh, the end. A of that. pistol. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll sneak forward and see because you know they want the poor rogue to get killed. Okay. Of course, I'm sneaky. <laughs> well, we also oh, want you to find any traps that might be there. He That's the best. He hasn't cast any light at this point, right? Correct. Okay. All right. Go ahead and give me a, a perception check there, Fleegan, please. Oh. Oh, look at that. That's um, cool. Yeah. So, um, you the hallway continues um, down kind of beyond your ability to see um, and uh, it keeps going but uh, within the hallway are obviously rubble and some other stuff um, um, I'm going to show you something you actually notice some handwriting on the wall as you're walking down there um, and I'm going to share this with you and you s seem to potentially be making out um, maybe a fog um, though because your dark vision doesn't really give you the chance to see color um, I'm going to go ahead and show you this I'm going to say that you went down far enough to be able to see all the way towards the end here um, you guys see that, uh, picture I shared, right? Yep. Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, so you see that the hallway eventually comes to an end, and, uh, there seems to be a mist or something down near the end of the hall, um, coming from that room. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't look anything other than a mist at this point, but you see, uh, um, writing on the wall... Let me show that to you as well. Oh, this stonework is very good. I think I recognize it. It's as coming from the Grudge Holder clan. You think so, huh? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Um, um, recognize the stone. So you see, you see writing on the stone. So you're going to tell them what you see. Well, let me get over to it first. Uh, yes. I think I will go back and tell them that uh, where are the shining eyes? That comes in the darkness. And we should run for our lives. Like up and out of the well, maybe? <laughs> um, I will give you inspiration for that. Uh, so you can carry inspiration on that. Thank you. And um, with that, my friends, we will call it an evening. All right. Sounds good. But uh, that was fun. well done, guys. Um, my question is, is with my golden rule, the desire is to find out if you've had fun. Did you have fun tonight? Yes. yes. Very much so. Huzzah. Good, good. Indeed. Well, then, my job was accomplished, and that's the point of this, and so that's good. So I hope you guys are looking forward to the next time. Uh, thanks to those who have watched us. Uh, if you're watching or will watch us in the future, um, enjoy, and uh, we will yes, have another please. session soon. So we can go ahead and stop the stream at this point. Um, guys, um, uh, our plan is to do this every other Thursday. Um should we end with something like, may your, all your adventures be gooey? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, yes. And we must, uh, we on. We, we must uh, recognize uh, the gooey cube. And uh, yes, uh, in the words of the great wizard, 
Aha! And may all your adventures just be be sticky. And we hope your eyes tonight have been opened by wonder. Okay.